Okay, we're on the air. Put the microphone on. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for being here. I know after a three-day weekend, it's sometimes a little hard to get back in the saddle. Uh, this is the regular open meeting of the United Laguna Woods Mutual Board of Directors, California Nonprofit Mutual Benefit Corporation. Today is Tuesday, November 13th, and it's 9.30 a.m. in the Laguna Woods Village Community Center. <clears throat> we have a quorum. We are all here. And uh, we'll acknowledge the media. A reporter from the Globe isn't here yet. Number uh, two. <clears throat> number two. Right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not all here yet today either. There. Uh, we will do the Pledge of Allegiance, and it will be led today by Director Trong. Just face the flag and repeat that for me. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, now the media. <laughs> there she is. And we also, of course, have our wonderful uh, TV6 upstairs that's filming this. Uh, the agenda. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, um, have some discussion on it. There are a couple of things that need to be removed and put on different agendas. So let's get that all out of the way, and then we can approve the agenda as corrected. So uh, let's see. Um, Carl, yes. I'd like to remove. I'd like to remove 13A from the open meeting agenda and push it towards the closed meeting to discuss the committees. And then, if we need to, we can vote on it in an open meeting later on. I second. Is there any objection? All right, without objection, we will move 13A to the closed agenda. Uh, anything else on the agenda that someone would like to? change or move or remove or whatever. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Why is that being changed from an open meeting to closed meeting? Discussion, Carl, you can. <clears throat> I'm not taking away the fact that we will have a vote on it in an open meeting setting. However, I think <clears throat> that we need to hash out some things based on words of wisdom I've heard from various different directors on this particular issue. and. We will be on TV, and the people on TV will start getting bored to tears. So I feel that we should do it and hash it out in the closed meeting first. Then when we come up with something that everybody's amenable to, that we can bring it down back to an open meeting at some point in time. That's the only thing I'm thinking about right now. OK. Any objection? So without objection, we do that. Um, now I'll ask for a motion to approve uh, the amended agenda. Cash? Second? Maggie? All right. Uh, any objection? All right. Without objection, the agenda is approved as amended. <clears throat> we have two uh, meeting minutes to ap approve at this meeting. One was for our September 11th, our regular September open meeting. And then we have the other two are the special OSHA, uh, open meeting uh, procedures on uh, the 30-day review and the special open meeting counting of the ballots when we had our election. So uh, <clears throat> are there, may I, yeah, I did get a motion. No. I need a motion to approve the three minutes of different meeting, open meetings. Manuel, anybody? Um, I have a correction to, uh, it's, uh, Microphone, please. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, I have a correction to uh, the tabulation that's on page 39 of 63. Uh, when we held the meeting, my copy of this information had a hole punch, so I didn't see that number. But uh, it's just incorrect, so the tendency is to just carry these figures forward, so I want to make sure it gets corrected now so that when it gets in the uh, 2019 business plan binder, the right figures are used. But where it shows projected reserve balance of $16,838,169, the correct fi figure is $16,859,859,010. And that's what the uh, projection here will support. And that, by changing that number, then the project reserve deficiency changes and instead of, instead of $92,864,082, it should be $92,843,241. And then the deficiency per unit should be $14,683. So those three numbers have to be corrected for the 2019 business plan book. I uh, the don't other thing think I think we can do that at this meeting, Manuel. What? It has not been agreed on the board that those changes are correct. Well, what I'm telling you is that all the supporting documents okay. makes those numbers correct. I'm sorry. I'd like to hear from staff as to how those numbers were completed. Fine. So we can... I just want that. a record to show that I have informed you of the corrections that should be made. Yeah. Carl? I have a uh, possible correction in the, uh, the minutes of 26th and the 28th of uh, September. Pages. Uh, page one and page one of both. In, uh, in both those instances, I can only speak for the open meeting on September 26th because of the fact that the absence of a director pins uh, to various different things regarding Quorums. Quorums and what have you. I would like to have the words when an excuse was given and accepted for that particular director's absence, then the word, parenthetical word, excuse, put next to the person's name. And in the case of 26th of September, I was given an excuse because I was provided. I was. I went to the. Uh, <coughs> I went to the uh, show for the uh, energy exposition. energy exposition. And I was given that excuse, so I could not attend based on an excused absence. And the other one was Gary, and I, and I believe he was given an excused absence on the 28th also. And I, I think that any time there's an excused absence, those, that parenthetical word should be added to the minutes so that it's a, because it, it becomes a matter of record, then somebody can point back to it later on and say, well, they had so many absences on a board meeting. And that's my point right now. Okay. That's what I feel. Is there any objection to adding that word to <clears throat> the absences when they are excused? Hearing none. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. So we, we want to approve all three of the minutes. <clears throat> Did we have a motion? Oh, excuse me, yes. Uh, as far as the page... 39 of 63. Would yeah. you turn your microphone on? Thank you. Okay, uh, as far as the question that uh, Director Amadeus uh, uh, asked uh, uh, for correction, uh, may I ask, is that a, just arithmetic error or is there something that's different uh, in there? Uh, I don't know how it arose, but they just posted the wrong number from whatever the supporting document was. So it's an arithmetic error. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably yeah. calculate just some, yes. some calculation yes. error. Yes. So that's, I, you know, okay. I totally I fully support that. We should change that because uh, arithmetic is a fact. It's not a, a something that we can argue about. Jeff, should we do it uh, as a, at this meeting or should we pull it to uh, the minutes of that meeting until we can get staff's input as to why that number is there? Well, if, if this is a number that wasn't 
addressed by staff during our last meeting that we had. And it was not of the approved number. Was not? Was not. Then it should be pulled and readdressed. Okay. We voted on the budget and all of those that information at our September meeting. And so <clears throat> to make any changes after the September meeting, we need to um, have some further investigation. But are the numbers that are reflected in the minutes of the meeting at which you approved those numbers different than the numbers in the current draft before you? No, they're the same numbers. However, the copy that I had from the finished had a hole punch through that right. area, so I never looked at that number. Yeah. This time I looked at both of them and the tabulation supporting the number. This number is incorrect, that's all I'm saying. And when we put out the 2019 business book, we should be using the right number. It's just a very simple little change. Okay. I just would still like to have yeah, staff fine. review have staff it because we it. have to reaffirm the budget right, I agree that we that. approved Let's at just our September it. meeting. I agree. Let's correct it. Okay. We can't correct it at this meeting. So, no, number one, I, I would recommend that you focus on what's in front of you, which is just approving of the minutes. As far as the budget and the numbers, that will have to be addressed in a separate meeting because it's not on today's agenda. All right. So we will <clears throat> uh, do it as written for now and then work on making any changes to the budget. Okay. Uh, Cheryl, did we have a motion on that? It was just the uh, agenda. So I need a motion to approve the meeting minutes for those three meetings. I'll make a motion. Cash, thank you. Is there a second? Maggie? As amendment. No, we're not amending it here. Oh, oh <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the excused part, um, <clears throat> does anybody have any objection to that? It will be important as we go through the, the year to come that when things are excused, for instance, uh, Carl was representing us with for the energy committee at this particular thing and there do thing are things that come up that way so uh, is there any anybody that uh, objections to that all right without objection that change and so we will approve the minutes with that change and we will go back and look at the uh, <clears throat> 2019 budget before it the agenda, the uh, minutes. That was September <coughs> when we had that discussion. And the attorney said he was, he was redlining things to look into. Ac that's accidentally been omitted. Well, nothing is going to be um, voted on until our corporate members meeting. It was, so it was just an informational thing for us. It just, belo it just <coughs> belongs in the minutes. <coughs> May I respond to her? Uh, that's Jeff. Jeff. Uh, just to remind the board, what's in the minutes is up to you. What has to be in the minutes, as long as I'm in this room, is action items. Whether you want discussion in the minutes is completely up to you and your discretion. Minutes, okay. minutes are called minutes for a reason. They're supposed to be brief and contain and encapsulate the actions of the board. Not discussions. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Director Armendariz. Maxine, I noticed the same thing when I went through the minutes. And I thought <coughs> there's really no point to bring it up in this meeting. And I had planned to point out these things at the corporate meeting that we have tomorrow to go over this amendment. Uh, and the only thing that uh, these minutes said was that some changes were discussed but they didn't elaborate on what those changes were. <coughs> also, the minutes here have some errors in some of the language. Like, for example, it says over 1,000 square feet. It should be 1,000 feet or more. It has, like, over 500,000. It should be 
500,000 or more, and I had pointed out those things, they aren't in here. I will bring those up again tomorrow at the corporate meeting that we're having tomorrow. Thank you. Carl. <clears throat> With regard to that issue, I have, I read your op-ed in the uh, Globe magazine, and I also had my own comments, which I submitted through Juanita, through Mr. Beaumont. Mr. Beaumont has those comments, and we are supposed to discuss some of those comments in our closed meeting this afternoon prior to the vote tomorrow. And I believe that that vote tomorrow has been tabled. Is that correct, Mr. Beaumont? It's up to the corporate members, but that'll be the recommendation of legal counsel for GRF, myself, and uh, third. Yeah, because we had I had similar comments regarding that whole issue, and I submitted my comments, and I have copies of my comments, which I was going to discuss at the meeting this afternoon. Okay. Okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the meeting minutes of September 11th, September 26th, and September 28th. Uh, <clears throat> do I have any objections? No, I don't stand. Hmm? I don't stand. I didn't receive well, the whole packet of I, I understand that some of the board members' computers were not able to accept the <clears throat> closed meeting minute uh, package, which was there, uh, because it was too big and there were too many pictures. So Cheryl sent them out on Thursday night, and then she heard back from a couple of people that they could not download it. They could not accept, get it off their computer. So uh, everything was put in the in your box. As usual. <clears throat> As usual. Mm -hmm. And if you were the ones who said I didn't get it, then she let you know where they were. Yes? Uh, next time, can we put it into two separate documents so we can get a two or three, you know, how many to accept it? It is also available online. I understand that. I understand that. But we, we've been accustomed to receiving it in the email and uh, uh, other places. So I, I know you know wherever they are, but we don't. Okay, so maybe next time we can split it or at least inform us, send an email and say, here's the link, then it will be much easier for us. Okay, thank you. Frankie? They're always available in your box. And even though it was a holiday weekend and the community center was closed yesterday, as directors, you can always come in, sign in with the guard at the desk, and they will set you up in the elevator so you can go up if you want to check your box before the meeting. Yeah, if I know that, I would do, definitely do that. Thanks. The minutes are always out the Thursday night before our board meeting. That's by civil code, they have that many days. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm still looking for a vote for uh, the approval of the Minix. Mm -hmm. I think you have it on your... No, we have the agenda approval. Oh, agenda, okay, well, we did that one <laughs> by unanimous. So let's have the next one of approval of the meeting minutes. <clears throat> there we go. Do I have to get to you? No. I don't get it. There we go. Okay. Please vote. Yeah, you have this. Oh, wait, I, I should have mentioned that at the beginning. <clears throat> These are our styluses, and if you use the rubber bumper end, um, it's easier than a finger, which sometimes doesn't register it. So please use that to register their vote. Yes. I'd like to compliment staff for getting us these styluses. <laughs> Big improvement. Thank you. I think it will help a lot. OK, what do we got? Yeah, we're all voted, and it passes, so thank you. <clears throat> okay. 
while I'm thinking about it, please make sure that your cell phones are turned off or to silence them somewhere so that we don't have them during the meeting. Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> the next item. Yes. Yes, sir. What happened to the screen? It's broken. Oh. They're fixing it. But if you can see it, it's on that one over there. I think it was on that one also. So uh, anyway, the vote was <clears throat> nine to zero, two abstentions. All right, the next item is the report of the chair. <clears throat> and first and foremost, I would like to sadly announce a resignation which I would like to read to you. <clears throat> Honorable board members, United and third members, and VMS staff, today I am resigning my resignation from the United <coughs> Mutual Board of Directors effective November, December 1st. I am moving permanently to Arizona. I want to thank all of my fellow board members, VMS staff, especially the alterations department, Kurt Wyman and all of his staff, Eve Morton, our architectural and control standards committee and advisors. We all worked hard together to standardize many policies, making alterations as easy as possible without having our members or contractors spend time going through the variance process. Our contractors and members thank us for all our efforts. Thank you, all of my wonderful friends in the village, for all your friendships and support throughout the years. I will miss you all. Keep in touch. Lots of big hugs. Life is good and is signed by Janie Durrell. So <clears throat> in addition to having to appoint a new board member to fill out Janie's term, uh, we also have an opening on the VMS board because Anthony's term is up. And so uh, uh, we're going to accept nominations for both of those positions starting tomorrow, and the nominations have to be back by um, the 30th of November, and we will have a special meeting the 1st of December to uh, elect a new board member. Well, let's see, that's not gonna work on dates, that was the, the other one, because she's gonna be gone the 1st of December. So <clears throat> we probably will have the special board meeting on November 30th, and uh, the nominations for board will be back the day after Thanksgiving. That'll all be in the paper and on the news and special e-blasts and all that kind of stuff. But I uh, just wanted to let you all know that we, we are losing a important board member and we're all very sorry about that. But we're very happy that you are happy. <laughs> We like seeing your smile again. <clears throat> uh, I mentioned the, tel the cell phones, and that's about all I have in my reports. We have a very, very full agenda, both open and even more closed today. It's, I warn you now, it's going to be extra time, so <clears throat> let's get going on it. All right, now we come to the open forum. And this is three minutes per speaker. At this time, members may address the board of directors regarding things that are not on the agenda and within the jurisdiction of this board of directors. In other words, not a, a GRF or a third issue. Uh, there is a maximum time limit of three minutes <clears throat> per speaker, and a speaker may only address the board once during this period. The board, board reserves the right to limit it, but I don't think we're going to have to do that today. So uh, <clears throat> if you have not signed a comment card with uh, our corporate secretary, please do so. But let's start with who you have on your list, Cheryl. OK, our first speaker is Chris Collins. <coughs> Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Chris Collins, 3306Q, and I'm here representing the Foundation of Laguna Woods Village. Would you know what to do if you experienced a financial crisis and could not afford to pay your electric bill? 
If you ran out of money and only had food to last a week, if you suddenly suffered a loss of vision and could not afford to purchase a magnifier or a cane, if your spouse was experiencing increased forgetfulness or dementia but you couldn't afford a caregiver, if you were in the donut hole and your doctor prescribed an expensive medication, if you were released from the hospital and needed caregiver services you could not afford or you needed meals on wheels, if you could no longer drive and needed help with transportation, but your funds were limited? Well, first of all, the first step in getting help is, of course, to contact social services at 949-597-4267. But in addition, the Laguna Woods, in Laguna Woods Village, these difficulties can be handled because the foundation stands ready to help its residents. Uh, this temporary financial assistance can help buy food, pay for utilities, purchase medications, arrange for caregiver services, and provide tra uh, transportation, among other things. By contacting social services, um, their staff will verify the need and arrange for assistance. During this process, the social, social worker uh, will look at the needs and then, if possible, find resources through the foundation. And when the foundation does provide resources, it's important to know that payment is always made directly to the vendor. And all of the clients are, of course, confidential. For Meals on Wheels, you could contact, you should contact AgeWell Senior Services at 949-380-0155. In, in turn, foundation financial assistance is also available to needy residents who have vision problems by contacting the Braille Institute at 949-330-5062. Financial, foundation financial assistance for daycare services for residents with dementia or Alzheimer's is also available by contacting the South County Adult Services at 949-855-944. For more information, please contact the foundation at the foundation at comline.com or you can call us at 949-268-2246. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> next. Okay, our next speaker is Patricia Chapman. Thank, thank you for having me. <clears throat> I have a golf cart that I use. It's my only transportation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I have a transformer to plug it into at home. I also have a person who comes in once or twice a week to help me with things around the house, like cleaning, <clears throat> making my bed, doing some cooking for me. She has an electric car, a um, Fiat, and it's a fairly new one. <clears throat> she lives in San Clemente, which is a ways down and she goes from my house up to her son's in Long Beach. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I don't know what's the matter with my throat. I'm sorry. Anyway, she comes, and when she's there, she needs to plug in her car so she can continue on her way to Long Beach. But because she doesn't have any sticker or anything to show that she works for me. Uh, she, I was told she cannot park in my space. I can let her park in my area where, where I park my golf cart if that would be permitted, but because she doesn't have any other way to get around, she needs to plug in her cart. She comes up to the center or goes over to the Ayers Hotel and plugs in there when she's finished with me, but that's an hour. And that's a time waster for both of us. And I, I don't see why she can't park her car where I park my golf cart so she can get her electricity. I understand there may be some difference in the quality of the, the amount of time that she uses, but other than that, I don't know what to do. And 
I would like permission for her to be able to park where I do. I can pull my golf cart out for a while so she can park there. Now, would that be possible? Or maybe you can't give me an answer now. I can't give you an answer right now. Uh, we will <coughs> um, give answers when all of the questions are asked, and we may not have a, a direct answer on that. We may have to do research it a little bit and find uh, what the correct solution is. Okay. Because there are other, uh, <coughs> GRF controls the stickers and <coughs> their security and access committee uh, would need to make an exception. And uh, <coughs> so we, we need to look into a little bit farther, but we will. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Esther Wright. Esther Wright, 172D. Many of you already know that I'm the co-chair of the, the Non-Toxic Laguna Woods Project. You've heard me speak to you, and I welcome the new directors. And thank you for um, choosing to join this, this group to support the community. I have questions today rather than information. And I ask for answers to those questions. One of the questions I actually have the answer to, but I feel it's an important question to discuss. So the first question is, why does someone choose to be a member of this board? Why would somebody choose to volunteer, spend all the time and energy that is required of this task? And I'm very much aware of what it takes for you to be on this board and how you give of yourself generously to this community. Well, I realize that your commitment to service and to making a positive difference for this community is why you're sitting in that chair. And actually, that means that the co-chair of the Laguna Woods Project and myself have something in common with you because we are also volunteers. We live in this community and we are doing a service for the people who call upon us to have Laguna Woods be a non-toxic community. Now, when I'm here speaking with you, I'm not speaking as Esther Wright at 172 D. By the way, it says C here, but my neighbor is C. I'm D. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the 1,000 people who have signed a petition demanding the elimination of Roundup. Now, some of you already know that this petition came out of a recommendation that Maggie Blackwell made in an August Landscape Committee meeting. She spoke to uh, Lois and I and said, I would recommend that you distribute a petition. And we heard Maggie's recommendation, and we listened. And we called a meeting in Clubhouse 7. We were amazed at the turnout of people who came as a result of a letter to the Globe. We had a huge crowd. We had another huge crowd uh, a week ago, standing room only crowd of people who are very concerned about this. So I'm actually here on behalf of the 1,000 people who signed the petitions asking for the immediate uh, end of use of Roundup and other toxic chemicals. So my question about why are you here is, I know you're here to be of service. I know you're here to make a difference for this Laguna Woods community. So we have something in common in that respect. My other questions I need answers to today. Number one is why did Maggie recommend a petition if in fact as chairperson of the landscape committee, she did not respond to the demands of the petition with her committee. I know it's not really just you, Maggie. You have a a board that works on the committee and discusses these things. But how is it that the Landscape Committee has virtually ignored this request to immediately suspend the use of Roundup based on information that we provided, based on other chem uh, non-toxic chemicals that are available in the community? So that's one of the questions. Why is nothing being done in United? The other question is, what is it going to take? Is it going to take a ballot initiative? We're willing to do that. Is it going to take a recall election? We're willing to do that. Is it going to take a lawsuit? We're willing to do that. We don't want to do that. I personally do not want to do any of those three things. What I want from this board is to let us know why you are not listening to your constituents. They are the people who put you in that seat. They are the people that are asking that you support their health and wellness. And I thank you for doing that when you decide to do that. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lois Rubin. Yes, um, 781C. First of all, I want to thank all of you for your listening, for your concern about the wellness and the health 
of all of the residents here in United Mutual. I have questions also. I would like an answer to these questions. I'd like to know when the 100-day completion date is. Nobody has informed us of that. We'd like to know, and again, I also represent, as co-chair with Esther, the non-toxic Laguna Woods project community. In the five cul-de-sacs, why is it a secret? What's being used instead of Roundup? We and the non-toxic Laguna Woods project group have wanted and have asked for this to be a collaborative effort on the part of the board of directors and the part of all community members. It has been quoted by, I believe Maggie Blackwell, you quoted this, that going non-toxic would be cost an additional $16 a month to each member owner in United. What is that based on? I need to know. What specific non-toxic pesticide has been evaluated and will definitely cost each member an additional $16 a month? I, I would like, on behalf of our group, those documented financial statements. I want to know how this was determined. The experiment's still ongoing. Also would like to know, since we want to play by your rules, we would like to know how much will a special ballot cost so that all members and owners of United get to vote on whether they really want a non-toxic community and neighborhood. So we need answers to these questions. And I beg of you, we represent a group. There are many ill individuals. As a, health, as a health and wellness coach, I receive phone calls, I receive emails telling me of the tragic health consequences of breathing in and being exposed to and having skin issues and having immunological issues related specifically to the toxins, the poisons that we are exposed to. And I don't know if it's in the bylaws. I don't know if it was in the escrow papers. Did we sign up? Did we give approval to be poisoned in our environment here? I don't believe so. Also, I want to agree with Esther. I'm not in favor of any of the negative publicity of airing our dirty laundry out there in the Orange County community, because that will definitely affect resale values here, property values. So how can we work collaboratively to make this happen as soon as possible. You've ignored the petition of a 1,000 of your constituents. It's time to pay attention, and it's time to do the right thing. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maxine McIntosh. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the three officers, the president, first vice president, and, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, I thought Manuel was the second vice president. Mm -hmm. Cash is, uh, for uh, assuring me that there is a different approach being taken perhaps tomorrow during the corporate members meeting, and that United will be speaking to important issues there. Um, I do have a question for Jeff Bromont, our attorney. <coughs> When uh, Carl, who I consider a very wise friend, said he wanted to take something off the agenda and put it in closed session so it wouldn't bore the residents, is that legal status for having something in a closed session? Uh, I, I think it should have stayed on the agenda. <clears throat> um, then the comment made about agendas are usually meant to be very brief. That may be true for large boards, but the protocol for this board has always been to be very detailed. Notice today that there are 63 pages in the minutes for this, I didn't mean agenda, I meant minutes, in the minutes for the September 11th uh, meeting. 63 pages were in the minutes. So our minutes, by protocol, by habit, have not been trying to be very brief through the years. Okay? Um, 
GRF brought up the information at their meeting last week about a uh, GRF task force to look into investments, and there would be people from all the boards on that. I only take exception with the title, GRF Task Force, even though the idea came from the President's meeting to the GRF Finance Committee. GRF Finance Committee has nothing to do with, your with our finances or any other board's finances. At the GRF Finance Committee, they only deal with GRF finances. So I think it's really a misnomer to call that task force GRF task force. Call it all boards task force. Or call it GRF uh, and uh, corporate members task force. But please hang tight on that title. It gives a wrong message to the community. It sounds like uh, all the finances of all the uh, boards are going to be under the uh, jurisdiction of the GRF Finance Committee. They mean well, but that's the wrong name. And I do want to say I am so sorry to hear we're losing Janelle. Whatever happy reason, good, 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 but for us, bad, bad, bad. Look at today. Look at today. I think there's 13 items for you to prove in here that came from her committee. She had, and all of them are to make life better for United residents. There's even one saying, we're going to stop dumpster diving. Well, of course, everybody wants that. Nearly everybody wants that stopped. They've addressed everything they could, and they've made life much better for United. So, Janelle, your leadership will really be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Our Nancy. next speaker is Dick Rader. I just wanted to say that uh, I hope that the committee that is against Roundup and toxic agents will abide by what they said, that they will uh, work with the board, because I think there are some compromises that can be made. And I will suggest one that's been bandied about, and that is that the Roundup be used in areas where the dogs don't walk and the humans don't walk, and that would be on the slopes. And in, in that case, there would be no exposure because uh, it, it's been said that, well, you're breathing in Roundup. Once the Roundup's applied, it's dry. So there's no vaporization. And so I hope that they will work with the boards rather than take an all or nothing stance. That's just my comment on that. That's it. Okay. Well, we were waiting for more. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Our next speaker is Mary Stone. I'd like to correct something Maxine said. It's Janie Durrell, Maxine. <laughs> she put it together. <laughs> she put it together. Yeah. You said... Janelle, sorry. Oh, I see <laughs> you, you just kind of went. <laughs> anyway, Janie, we'll all miss you. <laughs> and, uh, and I hope you have uh, a very happy, successful life after you leave us here. And I thank you for all the hard work that you've done for us. And uh, wish you all the best in the world. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you. You're welcome back. <laughs> Oh, one more thing. One more thing. No, I'm not giving the VMS report today. It's Dick Rader's turn. And the reason for that is because in October at the organizational meeting, we, we didn't have a VMS update. So we're just moving down our, our, uh, our little roster like we always do in, in order. So I'll see you next month. <laughs> Thank you. That concludes our speakers. <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is the responses to the open forum speakers. And I'd first like to call on Maggie, since a number of the issues were uh, about landscape. Right. Thank you very much. Yes, I did suggest a petition. Yes, I'm glad you did it. And immediately upon receipt of the petition, we began the test. We said we would conduct a test to see which, where we would switch to and how effective it would be and what the 
results and ramifications would be for United. And this is what we are doing. And believe me, Mr. Hartley has been in constant contact with Irvine. In fact, I have the last series of emails, which I won't share with you. They are still discussing, they're discussing fine points about suffragants and pH levels and so on and so on, the half-life of it. And they're still talking about additional products to try. So this is an ongoing thing. They have been working. The 100 days is not over yet. The report will be December 13th. December 13th. So immediately in response to your petition, which I found very encouraging, and yes, I did suggest a petition. If you, if you take it to a membership vote, that will cost us about $24,000 for a ballot. But if we, what we are planning to do is see what we can use if we are not going to use Roundup. Roundup is not an aerial spray. It's not a spray overall. It's sprayed with a little tiny one. You know that, but not all the residents know that. So people are not inhaling it in great quantities at all times. It's only sprayed cer certain times a year. Now we have cut down the amount of times we are spraying it, even on the areas we are spraying it. We are spraying it less. The aim, of course, for everyone would be not to have toxics anywhere. But we are working very hard, and, and Bruce is in constant contact with them, and, and he is, is following everyone's advice. So we hope to have some really good results. Um, my, my figure of $8 or $16 came from a team, a team. We would at least need one team to weed United if we have to go to hand weeding, all right? A team a year is eight men and two supervisors. That is $600,000 a year per team. If you divide that up, somehow it comes to $8, I believe it is, a year. If we need two teams because none of the organics work and we decide we're going for it anyway, then that would be $16 per manor per month addition. Because, and, and the difficulty, it's not the cost. I think many of the residents would agree to the cost. The difficulty would be who would you pay if you got this? Uh, the difficulty is the labor situation, which is why we are working so hard to find something that will work, at least to help us get through this, because going cold turkey is just going to be deadly for us, especially if we cannot find the labor. Okay? So we are working on it, and we will discuss this all at the December meeting. We will have some results on which we can use and just go for it. And if we decide, okay, we're going to ban it for a year here and go with these organics and see what we can do, and then at the end of the year, maybe we'll know what we'll have to build people. We can pay them out of the reserves or whatever. But all these ideas could be suggested in the December meeting depending on what they come up with, and they are working very hard. So thank you very much. That's, that's it for now. <clears throat> Gary. I guess my question also, are all these people that signed this petition willing to pay the differentials that it's going to take if we do away with that? My second question is, I've been reading a lot of this. I have not seen any scientific anything that really states that there's, and I, I contacted my three children that are okay. physicians and asked okay. them, and they pretty much said it's all kind of a guess theory right now. No, it's not. Look on the internet. Uh, do you think I did not? Yes. Okay. Gary, if you give me email, I'm sorry. There is no debate here. 
You gave your comments. He's giving his. Done. Okay. Anybody else like to comment on that, Carl? Yes, I, I'd like to. I'd like to comment to Maxine with regard to item 13A. If you recall, when I said I'd like to put this to the closed meeting, is because of the fact that we haven't really had a t chance to sit down among ourselves to hash out the committee positions. And some people feel that they don't want to be on this committee, and other people feel that they would like to be on this committee. That type of discourse has not occurred yet. So as a result of that, I was postponing this to the closed meeting for us to hash it out. And then at some point in time in the future, probably next meeting, we will have a vote based on the discourse having been completed. If you want to hear us hash out a whole bunch of stuff, <coughs> I don't think that that would be uh, prudent at this particular point in time, because everybody's got their own opinion. So I'm just saying right now, I was not, this is not a secret. This will be out in the open, but right now we need to hash out a couple of things. Thank you. Okay. And then the other thing is with regard to Ms. Troutman, uh, the reason why I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody here at the dais, that uh, they're not allowing you to have somebody put in your, in your, in your uh, golf cart place uh, because when she plugs into yours, you have, a, you have a certificate that indicates that you have paid X amount of dollars for the year based on having a golf cart. And the electricity associated with that is part of that, but part of that fee. Okay, when she starts plugging in, now she's going to be charging a car. Okay, which is a little bit more electricity, and as, there's a different fee scale for that. And as a result of that, it's unfair to the community because this is common electricity that's being used. And as a result of that, now you're tapping into somebody else's electricity. And I think that's the, the, the issue right now on the table. So yes, it's, it's probably inconvenient for her to go to the Ayers Hotel, but under the circumstances, right now, <coughs> she's not paying the additional fee for the electricity that she would be using, I think. And, and please, somebody, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, Cash, you were first, and then Director Armendariz. I, I have a few <coughs> comments and appreciating few people here, especially uh, Chris Collins. She comes here every time, not just our meeting, but probably to the other third, as well as GRF meetings, and talks about support that our foundation is providing our citizens here. I would like to suggest one more thing. Maybe you should include the words bequests. Uh, because people here are all like my age, old. And uh, some of them may be able to even <coughs> put you in the will, in the foundation in the will, and bring more money. Uh, but I really do, from the bottom mm -hmm. of my heart, appreciate your efforts. Second, I have a comment on Patricia Chapman. I really think uh, she needs some help, and I will take the lead and I will look into it. What we can do, it may cost you a little money, uh, but as a variance, maybe we can do this. But I cannot talk about it, that I'm, but I will take the lead in looking at what options you have. And I will give you my card so you have my phone number. Also, I'd like to comment on the roundup. <coughs> Esther, we all are in favor of having a safe environment, not just for me, because we, are, we want to be a happy family. And we are, and <clears throat> Maggie Blackwell, our, our secretary and leader of this group, is looking into it, as so as our Bruce Hartley. So just calm down a little bit, give them the time, and don't talk about using the language such as, uh, you know, you're going to consider suing, and, and please don't do that, because that, that to me is like somebody threatening. And things don't work when you take that kind of approach. And that's about it. And uh, Macintosh, uh, Ma uh, Maxine, you are right. Uh, GRF is the trustors, and that should be made clear that they are just the trustors. They are not the trustees like you and I and everybody else. Uh, I don't know what the implications of 
changing just the title will be, but people should realize that they are trustors. They have their duty as trustors to take care of the property for us. Thank you. <clears throat> Director Armendariz. First, I want to uh, thank Maxine for bringing up her points about the uh, GRF situation regarding uh, approval of certain expenditures. Uh, the other thing I wanted to comment on was the concern with the Roundup. Uh, I think Maggie gave you a very good answer to all your questions. I am also on the Landscape Committee with her. And um, when the concern about Roundup came up, and I'm very concerned, not just for myself, but my dog and all the residents. And you know that. I've supported you. Uh, but we are in a certain program, and I think the only reason that uh, people in United are, let's say, extremely additionally concerned about it is because Third has banned the use of Roundup, and I'm sure that's, you know, influenced you. Uh, I think we're going about it the right way, and uh, we should get a full report at our next Landscape Committee meeting, which is December the 13th. That's just right around the corner. We should have some pretty good information from that. Uh, I hope that we make the right decision, decisions, but if unfortunately we don't, then I think we are gonna have to reach out there to the membership and see what the majority want, okay? But I think Maggie did an excellent job of bringing you up to date and telling you what we're doing. And I think, I don't know for a fact, but I think most of the board members are definitely in favor of doing the right thing. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other? Andre, did you have a comment? I see you turning on your microphone. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, this, uh, Maxine, thanks for reminding us that closed meeting is only for closed the meeting reasons, not for uh, anything else. I believe it's only for the personnel and uh, uh, contract issues discussion because uh, uh, those issues are more on privacy issues. This one is a public issue, so I would suggest that we have another special meeting rather than put in a closed meeting. We put too many things in a closed meeting. And uh, uh, last time I asked, checked that, uh, how come we don't have a closed meeting minutes? I was told because it's a closed meeting, so there shouldn't be any closed meeting minutes. So uh, there's a lot of things that we shouldn't put in a closed meeting. Uh, and also, uh, that should de uh, demand uh, maybe if we don't have the time, I'm all for have a special meeting so we can discuss it uh, outside of this uh, meeting gathering. And also, I would suggest that maybe we should get to closed meeting minutes published so everybody knows what's the result of closed meeting. There are certain issues that we may not want to publish it, but we should publish as much as we can about our closed meeting results. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Sue, you had a comment. Yeah, I'd like to thank the residents who have brought forth suggestions for change and improvement today. And I appreciate you being our eyes and ears since we spend quite a bit of our time in meetings. I would appreciate it if you'd include in the suggestion redemation and if possible, cost analysis. Since you've tasked us to improve the community without increasing the HOAs, also, we have to balance the individual needs with the community needs. I support the removal of Roundup and have been imported, um, been assigned the Landscape Committee. And lastly, I want to remind you that we're all directors are unpaid volunteers. Thank you. Any other director that would like to speak? I have a couple of comments. Uh, <clears throat> Maxine, about the investment committee, you know that I spoke up at the GRF meeting. I didn't like the language in their resolution because this investment committee, our treasurer was one of the ones that suggested it. The treasurers of all of the associations meet once a month to come up with good ideas and to try to work together. And this investment committee, uh, it probably will be, I think it's a task force, not a committee, uh, <clears throat> came up there. But the only question that we had when it went to GRF where it says GRF is forming this task force, no. <laughs> it is, they were to uh, vote on <clears throat> their participation. 
working with the task force. The task force will come up with something that affects everybody. It's just an investigating research educational committee. There will be no uh, actions taken. Everything goes back to the individual boards. But we felt it was <clears throat> good on our part to cooperate with the other ones instead of having uh, separate committees for all of them getting information that are the same thing. And <clears throat> there was one more here. <laughs> okay, thought I had another one, but I don't. So uh, if there's no more. I'm, yes. Okay. Uh, just to add to that, the reason that we did that also was uh, we felt that uh, all the treasurers in our meetings um, feel that we learn a lot from each other, and we figure that um, forming this task force, and then we're having outsiders also um, who are very informed in the market situation that will be sitting there with us. So we think that there is a lot to be learned. We do not have the ability to vote or to move monies or anything else. All we can do is make informed decisions and bring it to the board. Okay. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is our report from VMS. Mr. Rader. Good morning, board members and residents. I'd like to report on a couple of meetings that VMS has had. We formed a search committee for a new CEO. The committee consists of three VMS board members and one board member from each mutual. We're collecting resumes. We have a uh, professional search uh, group that is helping us. And uh, I will give you further updates as time goes on. <clears throat> Uh, at each of our uh, two monthly meetings, we have a different department head report to us in detail uh, as to the projects and uh, how they're proceeding. The board interacts with the uh, department heads and we make uh, appropriate suggestions, et cetera. And all of the board members are invited to come along and uh, participate in that exercise. Um, I have two departmental reports that I'm going to refer to today, and I've uh, curtailed them because if I stood up here and gave <laughs> you the entire report, we'd be here for an hour, the entire report from the two department heads. So I'm just going to give highlights. The first one is from Maintenance and Construction Department, headed by Ernesto Nunez. As we all know, we've been, uh, United has uh, been particularly concerned about wasteline remediation, and uh, that's an ongoing program. We increased uh, in the coming year the amount that we will be spending from 1.5 million to 2.3 million. So that's an ongoing project that's moving along quite well. Pneumatic electrical, uh, electrical panel replacement. The left one is the old one. Obviously, the one on the right is the new one, and that's uh, going a basic. We all know about the United Handyman Service. It's uh, doing quite well. Uh, I actually have utilized it. My wife has, anyway. And I recommend it for anybody who has to have a handyman because uh, you will have two visits a month, up to two visits a month. And if you uh, hire an outside handyman for a couple of projects, I guarantee you, you will spend more than $200 that you will pay for the entire year for the two visits, of, up to two visits a month for our own handyman program. Of course, we're addressing dry rot. <coughs> and uh, also, we have our solar panel, which is now uh, operating and that's being maintained by VMS services. I'll now, uh, on, what is it, on Aragon, uh, if you go there, you will see that shepherd hooks have now been placed, and that is a project that's going to take many years, but we're replacing the barbed wire with shepherd's hooks throughout the community. 
Uh, there are other projects that affect everybody, including United. We all know about pickleball and paddleball courts and across, across the <coughs> lawn bowling uh, 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 item that has been taken care of. There are a lot of other things. I sort of summarized them. Go on at the clubhouse renovations. You will notice that there's a lot of pool maintenance. Uh, on Clubhouse 7, there's been some floor flooring uh, repairs and new carpeting. And then we have in the community center here, a <coughs> new HVAC uh, item that will be going on to the roof. To move on, the second departmental report was provided by Recreation and Special Events, Brian Gruner. And, um, oh, that doesn't. Yeah, that shows. Uh, he showed us the dashboard that comes out, I think, monthly. And uh, it's particularly interesting if you look at the blue bars. It shows us the activity in, uh, levels in the various clubhouses. And the one that is the highest, it turns out, is the fitness uh, areas. That's the most utilized. And clubhouse one is um, the most utilized clubhouse. He then reviewed some of the summer and spring events that have occurred, and uh, they're listed here. Memorial Golf Tournament, Memorial Day, uh, Easter event at the Equestrian Center Village Games. The Farmer's Market was held this year for the first time, and it will be repeated it was at one of the garden centers, and of course the July 4th celebration, which was very well attended. When we had the heat wave, we had summer movies so that people could go to the clubhouse three, I think it was, and cool off. And the patio concert series is continuing. With regard to the equestrian center, uh, a new supervisor has been hired, and you'll see some new things happening there. Uh, with regard to uh, certain events, recreation department wants to collaborate with certain uh, of the clubs and so they're going to be cooperating with the International Lawn Bowling Tournament, the Tennis Club Doubles League, and a lunar event, which would involve the uh, Korean and the Chinese uh, groups. We also have ESL classes, English as a Second Language, and that's becoming quite popular. Last slide, operational improvements. Uh, the Recreation Department uh, is having uh, meetings with club presidents. They reduced the number of emeritus classes, and that was done because uh, they analyzed classes and found that many of them were overrepresented by outside people as opposed to just a few residents. So they eliminated those classes. However, they are going to have a survey coming out in December, and it will query uh, the residents as to what new things they might like to see the Emeritus Program Institute. There's a continuing focus on communicating, and also there's uh, the last item. There's ongoing um, uh, tr professional and leadership training within the department. Thank you. That's my report. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm sorry, there are no questions for reports. If you have questions on VMS, you either do it at the VMS meeting or you can meet with Dick afterwards. Our next report is from uh, our CEO. <laughs> Honorable President, members of the board. It is my honor this morning to give the CEO's update. Before I begin, though, I wanted to comment on Manny's concern about the numbers in the minutes and the correct number for the projected reserve balance should be $16,859,010. And so we will make sure that everything ties correctly to these schedules before it is published. On Sunday of this week, uh, Laguna Woods Village celebrated our veterans, those who have served in the armed forces, with a celebration at Clubhouse 2. There were 100 attendees, including 30 veterans from the Korean and Vietnamese wars. Guest speakers included Korean War veteran Peter Chong and Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Brine from the 1st Marine Regiment of Camp Pendleton. It was a very successful event and very um, heartfelt. So we thank you for everyone who participated in that. This Saturday on November 17th, 
the post-tensioned reinforced concrete slab will be poured for the paddle tennis and pickleball court project. That's in the gate 12 area. This will result in an uninterrupted, perfectly flat surface with no construction joints for the playing surface for uh, paddle tennis and pickleball courts. We are going to try to minimize the disruption to gate 12. The concrete itself will be poured from Moulton Parkway. A lane on Moulton Parkway will be taken out of service for this project. And then only a few parking spaces in the gate 12 area will be utilized for unloading and loading equipment. So that project will uh, occur from 7 a.m. to approximately 6 p.m. this coming up Saturday. So we encourage residents to avoid the area, if at all possible, while the construction is going on. I also want to mention that Pool 5 is currently closed for routine maintenance activities, and Pool 6 is closed for the winter season. Until further notice, the available pools for use are Pool 1, which is available from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Tuesday it opens at 9 a.m. Pool 2 is open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Wednesday mornings it opens at 9 a.m. Pool 4 is open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Friday it opens late at 9 a.m. So please use those pools for your swimming uh, purposes. I wanted to mention that the Thanksgiving buffet will be held on Thursday, November 22nd from 1 to 3 p.m. in clubhouses 2 and 5. Tickets are currently on sale and may be purchased in the clubhouse offices at clubhouses two and five. Most importantly, I want to emphasize our Thanksgiving holiday hours. The hours in effect for Thursday, November 22nd and Friday, November 23rd for the community center are as follows. The recreation office, the PC learning center, and the Mac learning center will be closed on Thursday and Friday. The fitness center and table tennis room will be closed on Thursday and have modified hours on Friday, being open from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Resident Services Call Center will be open Friday and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. by calling 949-597-4600. And transportation, uh, the only service that will be running on Thanksgiving Day is plan a ride. To make those reservations, please schedule your trips no later than two days in advance. In closing, I want to thank the VMS staff who've been performing at a high level since the former CEO's departure. The experience and professionalism of our board members, coupled with our department heads, have resulted in a seamless transition. Some highlights of recent accomplishments include the uh, transition of manor alterations to new space on the first floor, and this results in enhanced customer service for those residents who need permitting assistance. We serve more than 1,200 residents per month in manor alterations, and with the new space, we have ample room for rolling out plans, which is a, a great change from what they had previously. There are shorter wait times, and residents can now call and schedule appointments. You may have also noticed the construction activity in social services, and this is to provide new workspace for additions to the social services staff Three new employees have been added at minimal cost to the village. This includes two master level social work interns who started in September. And one social worker will be joining the staff through collaboration and funding from Memorial Care Saddleback Medical Center. And they will pro be providing um, seminars throughout the community on topics of concern to our residents. And lastly, just wanted to mention that the new passive park adjacent to Clubhouse 2 is now open. If you'll remember, this is where the shuffleboard courts used to be. Now we have a, an open area that residents can use to enjoy the view, read a book, and so forth. And that concludes my presentation this morning. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Siobhan. <clears throat> okay, now we're up to agenda item 11, which is the consent calendar. Some people don't really understand the consent calendar, so I'd like to give you a little background. All matters listed under the consent calendar are recommended for action by committees where all the work is done and will be enacted by the board on one motion instead of going through each one separately. <clears throat> In the event that an item is removed from the consent calendar by a member of the board, uh, that item will be subject to further discussion and action by the board will put it in a different 
uh, area. So <clears throat> can I have a motion to uh, approve the ascent calendar? I so move. Maggie, mm -hmm. is there a second? Okay, Carl. All right, uh, is there any item on the consent calendar that any <clears throat> board member would like to remove to another area? Okay, seeing none, uh, are there any objections to the consent calendar? Again, seeing none, it's approved without objection. Okay. So we're down to um, agenda item 12, which is unfinished business. And of course, the little next word that says none is incorrect because there are five items on there. Uh, just again, to refresh your memory, the things in unfinished business are ones that came up at a previous meeting and were at the first reading of them. And then they were moved on to a second meeting, which is today, uh, and they have undergone the 30-day review to comply with the uh, civil code. As you'll see, all of them were <clears throat> brought up in September, but because there wasn't 30 days between the September and October meetings, uh, they came for uh, today for approval. Uh, <clears throat> the 28-day approval period doesn't start until January, thing. <clears throat> sorry to say. Uh, <clears throat> the first item, is to entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for revisions to architectural standard 17, patio gates and courtyards. Janie? I so move. Okay, is there a second? Cash? Do you want me to read it? Yes. That's what I thought. Usually we read it before we okay, well, uh, make a right, motion. Just want to okay. Out. So <laughs> having get a jumped the gun, so we could have a discussion. Okay, right? this is this is prior reading here. Uh, standard 17 patio gates and courtyard doors. Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create a new alteration standards as necessary. It recognizes the need to revise alteration standards 17 patio gates and courtyard doors. Now therefore be it resolved November 13, 2018 that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby adopts the re revisions to alteration standard 17 patio gates and courtyard doors attached as part of the official minutes of the meeting. Resolution 010762 adopted June 2007 is here superseded and canceled. And the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. Uh, this resolution is to e e eliminate the requirement of future installments of alteration patio gates made of wood. Courtyard doors and patio gates are allowed instead to be made of wrought iron or vinyl. They can be white or painted to match the color of the building trim. That's the essence of the resolution. I'm, I moved this, I guess no. Janie yeah. already moved it. <laughs> she jumped the gun. I will. <clears throat> No, all right, we have it moved in and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion on uh, 12A? Madam Chair, may I bring out one point? Yes. We missed reading the resolution on item 11A. That should be read to <coughs> variance request. Well, we did the clothes, the consent calendar is one thing, and so there aren't ones to read. Yeah, it's included okay. here. So. You've got it in your, there, but. Right. Thank you. When we have no objection and do it as one thing, we okay. don't go through that again. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Thank so, you. Uh, let's vote. Please use your screens. Yes. 
Um, mine isn't. I'm back and oh. forth with Chuck right now because my machine isn't working. <laughs> mine so, isn't either. All right. My vote is yes. Okay, so then it's 11. Okay. That's only 10. Oh. It will be corrected in the minutes. Okay. All right. It passes. <clears throat> and uh, the second one is uh, similar. Entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for revisions to Architectural Standard 18, gutters and downspouts. Would you read the resolution? Standard 18, <coughs> gutters and downspouts. Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary. And the committee recognizes the need to revise alteration standard 18 gutters and downspouts. Now, therefore, be it resolved November 13, 2018, the Board of Directors of the Corporation adopts the revisions to alteration standard 18 gutters and downspouts as spouts as attached as part of the official minutes of this meeting. Resolution 0110 224 of October 2010 is hereby superseded and canceled. The agents and officers of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. Uh, new gutters added must match style and color of existing gutters and made of aluminum or vinyl coated aluminum, which are more durable than copper or steel gutters. It sets specifications for measurements and downspouts and placements of the gutters and downspouts. That is the essence of the resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? Janie? Okay. <clears throat> I'm letting Janie do these things. They're all from the Architectural Committee. Look, she wants to vote on them. All right, it's been <clears throat> uh, moved by Maggie and seconded by Janie that we approve this on <clears throat> Architectural Standard 18. Is there any discussion? I can't vote. All right, everybody who can vote on their screen, please do. I vote yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 <clears throat> All right, it passes. Uh, Uh, C is to entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for revisions in architectural standard number 43, and that is bathroom splits. Would you read the motion, please? Uh, whereas Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, and Architectural, the committee recognizes the need to revise alteration standard 43 bathroom splits. Now, therefore, be it resolved November 13, 2018, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby adopts revisions to alteration standard 43 bathroom splits attached as part of the official minutes of the meeting. Resolution 01 of February 2018 is hereby superseded and canceled. And the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. This, revolution, this resolution specifically sets specifications which will allow bathroom splits to be done in certain Gr Granada, Barcelona, and Valencia models. That's the essence of the resolution. I move this resolution. Thank you. It's been <clears throat> is there any discussion? It's been moved and seconded. Maggie and Janie. If not, will you please vote? I vote yes. Yes. And I'm yes also. All right, our next one <clears throat> is D. Right, but where do I get the letters? Ah, okay, thank you. L little computer problem here. Um, Janie and uh, Car uh, 
Gary both have problems. All right, I'll entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for revised interior flooring policy. Would you read the resolution, please? The installation of replacement flooring in units situated on a building level directly over another unit's living space has generated nuisance complaints to the mutual related to noise transmitted to the low neighboring units when members have replaced original flooring types with alternate flooring materials. Whereas the United Laguna Woods Mutual Occupancy Agreement requires that a member should not obstruct or interfere the rights of members or annoy them with unreasonable noise, and legal counsel has previously opined that the mutual has the authority to establish rational rules to regulate unreasonable noise, Whereas May 13, 2014, the Board of Directors adopted Resolution 01-1458, which prohibited any future installation of hard surface flooring in second floor units in areas other than the kitchen and bathrooms of units. Whereas Resolution 01-1458 defined hard surface flooring as any flooring other than original flooring types of carpet, vinyl, or linoleum. And whereas due to the advances in soundproofing, underlayment technology, and the continued popularity and value of installing hardwood style and laminate floors, now therefore be it resolved, the Board of Directors hereby approves interior po flooring policy, attach the official minutes of this meeting to further define and regulate permitted flooring types, Mutual shall permit the installation of alternate flooring materials other than original flooring types, provided the materials meet the sound transmission specifications in the attached policy. The installation of flooring types other than carpet and padding in any area of the unit with living space of a separate residence below it shall meet the requirements of the policy Further, <clears throat> living space shall be defined as any area within a unit that is not a bathroom or kitchen. Resolution 01-1458, adopted May 13, 2014, hereby superseded and canceled, and the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. This will allow installation of new flooring components in upper units, which meet the FIIC ratings of 50 when installed. That is the essence of the resolution. I move this resolution. Thank you, Maggie and Janie. <clears throat> we have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing no one, I'll ask you to vote. I vote yes. I voted yes also. As did I. Okay. okay. <clears throat> it passes unanimously. One more. <laughs> Moving forward from unfinished business. Would you read that, please, Maggie? <clears throat> Unauthorized removal of refuse and recyclable materials from mutual provided containers. Whereas the Governing Documents Review Committee has recognized the need to establish a rule prohibiting the unauthorized removal of refuse and recyclable materials from United provided containers, whereas the Mutual has determined that unauthorized access to materials placed in refuse and recycle bins provided by the Mutual is unsafe and may result in increased liability for the Mutual, Whereas removing mutual material from refuse and recycle bins provided by the mutual is illegal under California law. Now, therefore, be it resolved November 13, 2018, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby approves a rule prohibiting the unauthorized removal of refuse and recyclable materials from mutual provided containers in common area for use by residents and further. Resolve further officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. This resolution means you cannot go into, jump into, enter a bin 
a, re a bin, recycle or otherwise, to remove materials. That's the essence of the resolution. I move the resolution. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Janie. All right, <clears throat> we have a motion and second for uh, 12E. Uh, is there any discussion? Yes, <clears throat> Andre. Uh, this, is, this is a minor issue here. In the first where us, at the end, uh, it says uh, United uh, provided the containers. Do we provide the containers or the waste management provided containers? Or is that just we authorize containers? Waste management does through our contract. So it's, uh, it's we authorize the container. It's not our containers. Correct. OK, I would like to change the provided to authorized. Just to, and also the second where us, the reset in the second line. And the recycle being authorized by the mutual. I think that's pro a pro more appropriate. It's not us provided, because we don't provide anything. So when there's argument and say, we don't provide those things, that's not ours. OK, uh, is there any further discussion concerning it? Siobhan, do you have any updates? I think that change would be fine. Very mm -hmm. good, all right. Everybody agree? Without objection, we will change the words to authorize. Right. <clears throat> All right. Are there any? Uh... Oh, Maxine, I'm sorry. Yeah, just a brief question. <clears throat> uh, some time ago, we were told, maybe three, four, five years ago, that the dumpsters were provided by the city. Waste management provides them, but it was under the jurisdiction of the city. The contract is with the city. Mm -hmm. It still does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Darn it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Would everybody vote, please, on 12E? I vote yes. Yes. Okay. It's unanimous. 11 0. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. We're on to 13, new business. This is the first reading, and because, again, uh, the lack of 30 days, uh, these items after our first reading will be <coughs> moved to our January meeting for the second reading and final vote. Uh, we've already moved A to <coughs> the consent calendar. Uh, B entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for revisions to architectural standard 19. We didn't move A to consent, we moved it to closed. Oh, closed, I'm sorry. Can't read my own writing, <laughs> all right. Uh, so we're looking at B, <clears throat> which is revisions to standard 19. Would you read that please, Madam oh, Secretary? Yes. Revised alteration standard 19 balcony modesty paneling. The Architectural and Control Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new standards as necessary. And whereas the Alteration, Control, and Standards Committee recognizes the need to revise standard 19 balcony modesty paneling. Be it, be it resolved, November 13th, 2018, Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces the revisions to alteration standard 19, balcony modesty paneling, attached as part of the official minutes of the meeting. Resolved further that resolution 0109287, adopted December 2009, hereby superseded and canceled, and the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of this corporation to carry out this resolution as written. And the specifications are on the following page, have to be attached to the railing, not attached to the building deck or flooring. It has to be the size of the railing, not any larger, not below or higher. It has to be rigid and easily removable. A, a vinyl, vinyl lattice or metal that is of solid design, void of openings and gaps. And that may be painted to the match the color of the railing which it is attached, or vinyl la lattice must be white. That's the essence of the resolution. I move this resolution. Okay. Second. I've got a question. 
Yes. Well, can we get our second first, and then we'll have okay. discussion? Thank you, Janie. Now we have discussion, Gary. Is there a reason we can't include glass panels? Hmm? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Kurt, would you like to speak to that? Why would you have glass? Why alterations felt that line. glass was not? Why would you have glass a good clear line? Honestly, glass didn't come up because these are modesty panels. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're you know, not supposed to see through. They're so that well, when you're on there. Okay, but the same as like my front door where it's. it's Frosted glass? Yes. That, like I said, it didn't really come up because they're not easily maintainable, easily removable. We need them removed when we paint. Right. We could consider it, but it never came up. You could ask for an alteration. So it would be a variance. It would be a variance yeah. if you wanted to do it. OK. I, I, yes, Carl. I'd like to comment about that. Um, while it could be frosted or what have you, it'd still be modesty, OK? But the use of glass in that particular application, especially if it's a balcony at the second floor or what have you, the possibility with windstorms and stuff, it may turn out to be a dangerous situation, OK? Go crash into the ice, unless it's plexiglass or some sort of Kevlar would have it. That would be, yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, J.D.? I just wanted to make a comment. As long as I've been around MNC and also uh, chair of the committee, we have never had anybody for a variance to have glass or pexiglass or anything like that, to my knowledge. And I'm not sure about you, Kurt. I haven't, I haven't seen one, but we consider it no. a variance. Right, right. Just a variance. For a variance. Okay, this is a standard. What we're trying to do is make as many of these a standard procedure that don't have to go through the variance process, which is time and money and for both the resident and for um, yeah. us. I, so. One more comment. Yes. I just want to say that um, when you're talking about being a hazard, um, if you go to any large cities in Vancouver, Florida, New York, all of the new modern buildings have these glass panels on their balconies. And obviously not causing a whole lot of concern. Okay. Well, we're not saying you can't have it, we're just saying it's not a standard. I'm just right. making the <clears throat> statement. Right, and you could still have it uh, through a variance since we have very little uh, Requests for it, we, it is would go to a variance. All right, are there Question. any more? Yes. Uh, I also have a glass panel on my balcony, that's which is very convenient for me. Uh, and I think there are plenty of them in the community, and I haven't heard any complaint about windstorm that's causing problems with the uh, glass panel. So I would hope that it will be a standard practice, that so we don't have to go through the variance process for everyone is a request or a maintenance. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Secretary, would that be just a change to uh, the materials that they suggest in there if we add glass or plexiglass? Well, add glass. I suppose it would take a an amendment. Okay. <clears throat> Have a discussion Jane? on that. I feel it would be if if they want plexiglass or glass or whatever outside of what we're just trying to standardize. That should be a variance. That's just fine. a variance. As long as it's just not a no. Yeah, yeah it's not a no. It's just right. Standardizing well, certain. and if you already have it, it's fine. If you want to change it to glass, that would be something else. Yes, well, I think Director Chong is trying to make the point that he'd like to make it part of the standard that did not have to go to the variance process. And make an amendment, I would say. Yeah, variance invariantly uh, costs money, costs time to mm -hmm. study it and asking questions and yes. correcting things. So This should be a committee discussion, and uh, I believe that we should standardize the items that are listed and make that a variance. You, so you suggest that making glass panel uh, variance rather than a standard uh, practice? Yes. <clears throat> Jeff? 
I was just I was just going to comment about this procedure that we discussed a couple of weeks ago. Um, just the, the, make sure the chair recognizes you before you speak. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh, we're going to vote on this, and if we you... have a couple requests to speak from the oh, audience, sorry, we have Mary Stone. Mary Stone, 356C. I have a modesty panel, and in the 20 plus years that I have been here, it has always been included in the paint program until this last paint program. And uh, they, when there was a need to uh, redo my balcony, they removed the modesty panel as part of the, the construction. And when they put it back up, they did a horrible job in putting it back where it belonged. But I notice in this, in your section 2.3, it says shareholders are responsible for removing all panels to enable maintenance of railings, balconies, or patios. That's going to be very, very difficult for <coughs> those of us in our 80s to remove those panels for uh, the maintenance. And I, in, I think that uh, that they have been there for ages, and they should be taken care of by the mutual. It is attached to mutual property. Um, the other thing is, is that just a comment on glass or plexiglass. They spray painted the exterior of the balcony railing with the modesty panel in place. So to remove it. For a glass, you know, the glass would have to be removed prior to painting the balcony railings. So, uh, but uh, my other thing is, is that if the panel had not been there, they would have painted the the interior portion of that railing, which hasn't happened. So, in this, this last series of painting, so I think you need to kind of think about that a little bit that are you going to paint the interior or not of the patio, of the uh, balcony. modesty, yeah, the modesty panels on the balcony. Right. Thank you, Mary. Who else did you have? Maxine McIntosh. You know, the issue of having uh, glass panels came up about 10 years ago. And the thinking at that time was, picture the glass panel, has to be from the top of the railing to the bottom of the railing. And when, when uh, especially women, want to clean that glass, okay, here's this railing this high, and they're leaning over to get the opposite, the outer side of that glass with their glass cleaner and their, their drying cloths. The inside isn't so bad. But that seemed to be provoking an opportunity for an accident. And so that's why in our wisdom, or maybe I wasn't on the board, I was just attending, but whatever, the wisdom of the board at that time was, no, let's not include glass. That isn't necessary. With all due respect to Andre, where it's worked, uh, all due respect, that might be asking for a liability issue if we allow it uh, technically. I think your chairman is absolutely right. What Janie, I won't say Janelle, <laughs> one of my favorite students in school, was a Janelle that was peppy and sweet and bright. And so when I see Janie, I think of her and I say Janelle. Um, I think you, you should go with her. Um, again, really respecting what Andre has said, uh, vote down the amendment and leave the whole idea of a possible glass panel up to requiring a variance. And go ahead and pass this um, uh, segment of your uh, agenda the way that uh, it is worded. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Maggie? Yes. Uh, if, if United starts removing the panels and painting them, then they must remove the pots and the other things that are attached to the panels and the other things that are replaced to it. And I, the idea is for United to take care of and manage United property. Uh, and so I would think that 2.3 should stand. 
Um, it, it is not up to us to say if it's easily removable. If you put it there, then you can take care of it. But it, it's an alteration. But sh shareholders are responsible for removing the panels to enable maintenance of the railings, which, is, which are ours, the balconies, which are ours, and the patio, which are ours, not for us to paint the item, which which is your alteration. So I'd say 2.3 should stay the same. Will it be covered by the handyman service then? I would assume so. <laughs> Any other comments? Yes. You've had another request to speak. I, I agree with I would... Director. I agree with Maggie. I think we'll leave it the way it is right now and take a vote on it. OK, thank you. Dick? Just want to remind people we have the handyman service that people could use. What you were saying. Mm -hmm. All right, <clears throat> uh, let's vote on this. I vote yes. Yes. I also vote yes, but. <laughs> I seem to be two items behind all the time on what we've got. So anyway, I will do it vocally. <clears throat> so it's eight, two. No's are two and abstains are one. So it passes. Okay, <clears throat> uh, 13C. Resolution 0118, whatever. Uh, alteration standard 20 balcony and patio covers, aluminum and vinyl. Whereas the Architectural Control and Standards Committee, I should call it ACSC, recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary. And whereas the committee recognizes the need to create alteration standard 20 balcony and patio covers, aluminum and vinyl. Now, therefore, be it resolved, November 13, 2018, the Board of Directors of the Corporation hereby introduces revisions to alteration standard 20 balcony and patio covers, aluminum and vinyl, attached as part of the official minutes of this meeting. Resolution 0150 is 01-1502, adopted January 2015, is hereby superseded and cancels, and the agents and officers of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. Uh, this allows aluminum and vinyl patio covers under various color options which are noted, and the specifications for installation No, no, that, that's no, not, not yet. yet. We're yeah. on C. We're on patio C. covers. C, the patio covers. <clears throat> I move this resolution. Jamie, are you seconding it? I thought you would be. <clears throat> All right. Uh, is there any discussion on the patio covers? Seeing none, we will. Oh, you do have a question. All right. Oh. Uh, I'm a little bit confused since I didn't get this one, uh, get a chance to read this one ahead of time. Just question, is this a patio cover or does that cover the shade? Is it also including the shade? No. Structure. The structure over, you know, as, a, as a roof, mm -hmm. cover and, and window outside, uh, or does it uh, include the shade? I have a luminous shade. It doesn't, it doesn't affect that. <clears throat> Patio covers, let's see. The balcony covers of aluminum must have aluminum fascias. Do you have a balcony cover of aluminum? And that's my question. Is aluminum shade a cover? If it's on the window, it's a shade. If it's over the... I think it's an overhanging cover. <clears throat> yeah, inside. It's inside of the window. It's oh. inside the roof, but it's, no. it's coming no, 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 down no, no, there. No. So it's the shade is. It's, it's, a, it's just a shade. It's not a No, it's a, not a, a patio cover. Roof. Oh, okay. Okay, <clears throat> then, then that's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, would I all vote, please, on 13C? I vote yes.
Aye. Yes. Right. <clears throat> Ten and one abstention, so it passes. All right. <clears throat> Now we get to the fences. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're looking at 13D. <clears throat> I will entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for a new architectural standard 44, fences vinyl. The ACSC recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new standards as necessary. Due to the construction restriction of wood products, the Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to create a standard for vinyl fences. Now, therefore, it be resolved November 13, 2018, the Board of Directors of this corporation introduces alteration standard 44 fences vinyl attached as part of the official minutes of this meeting. Resolve further the officers and agents of the corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. This is the new regulation allowing vinyl or vinyl clad fences, which are more durable than wood. Of course, we are backing off of wood as fast as we can. I, uh, that's the gist of the resolution. I move it. The resolution. Thank you, Janie. <clears throat> Discussion, are there any questions? <coughs> yes. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. <clears throat> and where are these fences are supposed to be installed? On the ground or on the balconies? Are we talking? <clears throat> uh, no, for the most part, they're in the ground. We don't have fences on balconies. But they, a lot of people have fenced their patio or have fenced uh, um, the yellow stake area for uh, the patio. patio. This would be and the patio, patio area. gates primarily. Yeah. <clears throat> Madam Chair, all we're doing is clarification. We're not allowing wood to be used in the community. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Yes. Uh, seems like this is only uh, applicable to the first floor. Is that yes. am I correct? Yes. Can we just add on because that, that caused some confusion? I do. I was thinking about the same thing that Reza asked. Uh, can we put on the first floor fences? Uh, fence is is a ground level item. It's not a railing. So we don't have fences on the balconies. All right, if you'd vote, please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, it's 9-4 and 2 abstaining, <clears throat> so it passes. All right. We are at 13E. Entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for resolutions to architectural standard 24 on skylights. Could you read the resolution, please? Alteration standard 24 skylight installations. The ACSC committee re recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new standards as necessary. The committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standard 24 skylight installations. November 13, 2018, the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces revisions to alteration standard 24 skylight installations attached as part of the official minutes of this meeting. Resolution 010340, adopted February 2003, is hereby superseded and canceled, and the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. These are new requirements and rules for uh, skylights. Uh, they're specific. I move this resolution. I'll second. All right. <clears throat> uh, I might uh, just mention that 
This is an important one because most of the skylights were put in many years ago and people feel that it is not an alteration. It is an alteration and they were not put in with the original build. And we just need to make sure people understand that. And again, I, I really congratulate the Architectural Standards and Control Committee for all of these. I know it seems like a lot, but this is bringing up to date so many of the things that have been questionable in the past. Uh, is there any discussion? <coughs> Cash? Uh, Well-written standard, but I think in uh, atriums, for instance, when people enclose it, item 2.7 cannot be applicable. It should not, the, the restriction of 10 linear feet is inadequate for some of the skylights. Well. So it should be removed from the A roof skylight. covering an atrium is not a skylight. Well, they put skylights in the atrium when mm -hmm. they enclose it. It's okay. not a skylight. It is a skylight. Yeah, that's my Okay. Any other discussion? Any comment from Kurt, maybe? On this, <coughs> item 2.7 of the spec. 2.7 does Skylight installation. This uh, is standard 24, item 2.7. One skylight shall be permitted per 10 linear feet of the patio. Well, that's, but so, a, a, an enclosed atrium is no longer a patio. Well, same thing goes with some patios that are enclosed that are kind of so shady that you need more light. 10 feet becomes not adequate enough. Well, that, that's, that's face. But it, it's not a patio, so Even that, that 2.7 would not would not apply if, if it's a room. Any, any uh, my objection is 10 feet, linear 10 feet, even in patio. If it's a uh, dark that, patio, you need. But if, if it's not a patio or a patio cover, I don't understand 2.7 at all. Kurt, I mean, oh. sorry. The 10 lineal foot goes to the structural capability of the typical vinyl and aluminum patio covers we have. So if you want to put more than one per 10 feet, you need to bring in a structural calculation that tells that the patio this? cover. This is just conforms to patio covers. Because people put skylights in patio covers often. So that's, this is just addressing that. Okay. And not in the interior not in the, the interior. living room. Right. Right. Interior skylights are covered by building code. How many you can have and how often they can be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, question for clarification. Yes. Uh, so what you're actually seeing is that uh, uh, more than two patio cover, uh, more than two skylights must have distance uh, to 10 feet, uh, separated 10 feet or further. In a patio cover, yes. Yes, so that that's what you're saying. They can be closer in a residence, but because it's it, that's different from um, mm -hmm. permitted per ten linear feet. Right. So you're saying if it's not ten linear feet, then you cannot have patio cover. What you're saying is yes, you can, yeah. but it, the two patio covers need to be separated by ten linear feet. Not right. the patio covers, no. the skylights no. in the patio yeah. covers. Right. Patio right. The cover. skylight. I mean skylight. <coughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean skylight. You must so, have so the statement is probably a little bit misleading there. That's why the confusion mm -hmm. comes in. Is that you, you, what you're saying? The skylight must be separated ten feet, of, at least ten feet apart. No, that's not what it's saying. Nope, no, it's not. No. It's saying, for instance, if you have a patio cover that is only ten feet long, you can only have one skylight. If you have a patio cover that is twelve feet long, you can have two. And if you are having a skylight anywhere else in your building? That's, That's all building covered code. by building code. It's not an alteration. Mm -hmm. So if you have a patio which is typically 10 by 12, you could have two skylights. 
Correct. But then they have to be that's, 10 feet apart. Pretty clear. Okay, right. let's go. They don't need to be 10 feet apart. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> that's not, yeah, that's not what it's. No, okay. That's not what it said. Uh, yeah, it's got to be 10 feet apart. That's what All right, uh, would okay. you please vote? Okay. okay. I vote yes. Yes. Director Bastani, can you vote, please? All right, it's yes, A, no, one, and abstain, two. It passes. All right, we'll go on to <clears throat> item 13, F. Oh, boy. Okay. Motion to, okay. <laughs> A revised exterior paint color palette. Resolution. Uh, the Board of Directors approved the exterior paint color palette consisting of seven color groups for single story buildings, five color groups for Seville style buildings, <coughs> and three color groups for multiple story buildings, three color options for entry doors, and color groups for laundry buildings and carports and use on the mutual structure. Da 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 da. The color groupings are sorted for availability for use on single story buildings and civil buildings, multiple story buildings, laundry. The color spiced berry was a color option for entry doors under the previous exterior paint color palette. And the Architectural Control and Standards Committee has reviewed numerous variance requests to retain the spiced berry color as an entry door color in the new palette colors. To maintain the operational logistical efficiencies of the current program, the revised exterior paint color palette will become effective with structures in the first cul-de-sac to be painted on the 2019 exterior paint program and all remaining structures on the 2019 exterior paint program scope and subsequent annual paint program scopes, that all requests for door color changes outside of the paint program will remain a variance request subject to approval by the board. Resolution 0115-158, adopted November 10th, 2015, is superseded and canceled. Uh, officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. The spice berry was included on the prior paint palette. It was not included on the new one, so now we are putting in the resolution the spice berry in addition. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see where we can get that on camera for uh, the people who are watching. Yeah. It. Oh, wearing a nice <clears throat> orange shirt. <laughs> There we go. Um, what we have here, I second the motion. Mm -hmm. What we have here is this is spiced berry. And we've had a lot of requests or variances to have spiced berry, which we have approved. And I don't know if this is going to show up on the camera or not. Excuse us, Benita. It's all right. <laughs> but these are door colors. So we have these as now standard door colors. People can choose whatever kind of their bathroom corresponds with the colors of their buildings. Spice berry will be a variance, but it's a standard. So that kind of confuses you a little bit. So we don't have to go through a whole variance program as such. This will be our new color, but it still has to go for approval. It depends on the color of the building. It depends also on what the neighbors are looking for and approving. Maybe somebody doesn't want a yellow type building that we have with a red door that looks like McDonald's. So that's why it has to go to the community, but it's going to be a standard color. That's what we're asking for your approval. Thank you, Jamie. <clears throat> All right, it's been moved and seconded. Do I have? We have a request to speak. 
Okay. All right. First, are any directors who have any questions? Carl? <clears throat> I'd just like to add that this went through the architectural committee and made the press same presentation with the quote unquote red door. And then it was referred to the MNC committee and we had another vote and we approved the spiced berry, AKA red door also. So at this particular point in time, it's almost a done deal. And uh, it's a door color that has, was in the village before and, uh, and should have probably remained. But at this particular point in time, it's still uh, a color now that's available to the people to use for their doors. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Trum. Um, when I bought my unit, I changed the, tried to change the color of the door. So I had to get a permission. I got the color code and thanks, you know, all the uh, hard effort that uh, providing the permissions uh, choice of colors. However, when I tried to go to Home Depot, I found out those colors uh, codes do not exist with Home Depot. Went to Sherwin Williams, they don't exist. Then I began to realize there's only one store that used to provide that. They don't even have uh, this color, this uh, kind of painting in stock anymore. They have those specially made. So my question at this point is, are these uh, uh, colors uh, called common colors that you can buy from everywhere? Or are these specially made that we can only go to the special store to order them? Excuse me, Kurt. Wait, Jamie, I recognize you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we're going to have this in stock. Is that correct? Although it is a special color that's been mixed. Will the paint group be in stock? Yes. So. That's the way I understood it. Yes, we will have it in stock. So we don't expect you to go buy it on your own. If it's part so, of the paint program. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a part, uh, paint program. There's a VMS program. But when we will try to change it, uh, we'll have to buy it from a special <coughs> uh, special no. store and make a special order for that. No, so I, it, or we can buy it from VMS. No, you can buy it from Home Depot. They will custom mix it for you. They don't no. carry very many stock colors at Home Depot. They custom mix almost every color. I, okay, I couldn't find I couldn't find a code for them to mix it. Most okay, of them they have they the, require the code, of the color code to mix it. Okay, and unfortunately that choice doesn't uh, that name doesn't exist in their book, so they couldn't make it. All right, let me look into that and get back to you. Okay. Okay, I would appreciate because uh, it, it took me quite a while to figure out where to find those, uh, the, the permitted color. All right, I'll look into it and get back. All okay, right. thank you. Andre, we put this in the standard, and it is not your responsibility to find it. You just say, I want it, and it's our responsibility with the paint crew to find it and, or have it pre-mixed or whatever. So uh, individuals can't just repaint their door anytime they want. They have to get permission. Yes, and, I got the permit. <clears throat> right. But if it, if it, then they, I can't believe that they told you to go buy it yourself. Well, well that was before this That's was, the case. Okay, so we're, we're putting it in as a standard so nobody will have to do that in the future. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Raisa? <coughs> well, I have um, said before, I don't I'm going to repeat it. I don't know why we are putting all these restrictions on doors, etc. Why? I mean, anybody who puts a color on that door, which is non-standard, they have to, they have to um, keep it as well. It's an alteration. They have to keep it. So why Mutual is getting involved in this? Why don't we let everybody decide if he likes a blue door, for example? <laughs> Why? <clears throat> well, my answer to that is we are a community. We have architectural standards. We don't want something glaring out. I can't paint my unit purple because I like purple. Uh, we agree every eight years, 10 years now, um, on a paint palette that is acceptable colors, both for the units, the doors, the trim, all that kind of thing. 
And it's that standard that it's an uh, alteration to. And what this is doing is now making it part of the standard so that you don't have to go through the whole alteration. Yes, but you see, <clears throat> the thing is that anybody who wants to go with the standards that uh, is being proposed, they can go with it. And mutual has to maintain it. But when somebody wants to use his own color, mutual is not responsible to uh, maintain it. And if he wants to sell it, he has to repaint it to one of the standard colors. So I'm, my question is, why are we putting all these restrictions? Because the mutual owns the unit yeah, and no. the doors. And we have mutual standards to keep the community looking what we think is, is best for it. We can't let everybody go out and pick their own colors. That's why we have the standards. And this one is just adding this door color to the standards. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Mary Stone? Yes. I'm one of those people who have a neighbor who converted her door to a non-standard door, but painted the, stan it, the standard color, which was spice berry. But when the, and it's a Seville, two doors mm -hmm. side by side. So when the paint crew came over, they left her door spice berry, but they painted mine white. <laughs> so my question is, how can I get <coughs> spice berry now? You would go to the architectural committee and they would <laughs> Do I have work to go to you. do I have to is it's not a variance anymore. No. So <coughs> can I just ask well, it, for a chargeable it, service for right, them will to come be, and paint my door? It will be a variance until this is passed uh, and becomes days. and becomes effective after thirty days. So uh, and so since there's only thirty, twenty eight, it'll be January. Fine. In January, not Fine. for good But that. can I can I ask for a chargeable service to come paint my door, the berry to match my neighbors? Mm -hmm. Talk to Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'm sure that could pr okay. probably be done. And as far as the question that Risa is, is <coughs> yes, if you have a custom door that you put a paint job on, that is an alteration, and they don't paint it. My neighbor is a perfect example of that. Yeah. We're almost through with these new business. Uh, I know a lot of today. Oops, excuse me. As I said, this there's a lot of alterations. It's because the alterations committee has been very, very busy trying to bring it all up to, to date and as easy for the members as we can. All right, uh, this is number G. <clears throat> or letter G, entertain a motion to introduce a resolution to update the vehicle, traffic, and parking rules. <clears throat> Madam Secretary, would you read the resolution? Right. The traffic rules and regulations are intended to mirror the California Vehicle Code and to adhere to the Davis-Sterling Act. And whereas the Governing Documents Review Committee recognizes the need to append amend a portion of the traffic rules and regulations in regards to commercial vehicles. Now therefore be it resolved the board of directors of this corporation hereby adopts the revised vehicle traffic and parking rules reg and regulations as attached to the official minutes of this meeting. 
and resolve further resolution 01-1758 from May 9, 2017 is superseded and canceled. The officers and agents of this corporation are authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. Um, I move this resolution and I'd like to be heard. Okay. I recognize you. The uh, we need a second. Oh, we need a second. Second. Thank you, Carl. Okay. Um, I think there's a wording that we need to put on page two of five of 13G. Uh, commercial vehicle. This is prohibited. Prohibited is a vehicle displaying any of the following attributes. Prohibited is also a pickup truck down below. Prohibited is a motor truck having all of the following attributes. Those are prohibited. It doesn't indicate that they're prohibited here. It just says if they have any of these, they must not have any of these. Well, if they must not have any of these, then the item is prohibited if it has all of the attributes. And so the other things may be done, and there's commercial parking now sometimes in, in the other uh, lot, in the lot. But, but as worded, this is very peculiar. I just want the word prohibited to the, a vehicle displaying any of the following attributes is prohibited. And then you go on with the three dots. A motor truck having all of the following attributes is prohibited. If the, and then you go to the five dots. That's, that's my suggested amendment. Okay. I don't know if it's an amendment, it's a clarification. Right. Uh, I'd like to say that that's not really what we're voting for. That policy is already in place. What we're really voting on is the change that we want made as to the storage of commercial vehicles in our RV lots at a rate of 640 annually, as state space permits. Uh, oh. that wasn't, Where is that? That was a change. Well, it's <clears throat> on page one of five of the policy that's existing. Oh, right I now. see. But I, okay. That's. But I, but the, I'm saying page two of five needs correction anyway, regardless of where it applies, because as it's, as written, it makes no sense at all. all right, Carl, you have a, your hand up. <coughs> I have a question. I'm a bit confused myself. Also, uh, was was it your, was it the intent here that the prohibited pickup truck has the attributes listed in the bullet items? Yeah. Yes. Because the thing right now is, is if you're restricting the pickup truck, if he has it, if it's equipped with an open box top bed, not exceeding nine feet in length. And. Yeah. But that should be, if he's. If and he's restricted, then it should be exceeding nine feet in length. Well, that's why you Because then that becomes more of a, it's not a pickup truck anymore. It's basically just more of a truck. And then the other one, an overall vehicle length not exceeding 22 feet, well, maybe that should be exceeding 22 feet because then that becomes a truck that you're using for business. So I'm, I'm confused as to why it's being in indicated. If this is the restriction for this pickup truck, you can't have one of these type of pickup trucks in the neighborhood, then this seems to be just the opposite, I think. Maybe I'm, I may be reading it wrong. <laughs> <Okay. clears throat> Sue? I think these are just definitions, the commercial vehicle and a pickup truck. These are just listed as a, de a definition <laughs> of what is a commercial vehicle, what is a pickup, considered a pickup truck. And then below it says, what they are permitted to do. <coughs> and this is not where the, what, what they're able to do. It's not, it's what they are. This is a definition. 
That, that's correct. But <clears throat> there is a lot of discussion on the uh, <clears throat> Mobility and Transportation Committee and the Traffic uh, Committee that <clears throat> we have a number, <clears throat> excuse me, of people who now live in the village and still work. And if they have a company car or a company pickup that has the name of their uh, business on it, uh, right now they're considered a commercial vehicle and can't get uh, parking stickers to go in their carport. And <clears throat> that's not covered with this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, All right, we have cash, and then Ellie, oh, Elsie. <coughs> Madam Chair, if we put the word prohibited in that context, then a pickup truck having only two axles is prohibited. According <coughs> to all. <coughs> all? All of the following attributes. Because we also have the problem with cars that have the name of the company on it. <coughs> it's not just pickup trucks. <coughs> Okay. <coughs> Elsie. I'm sorry, I need to get back to Carl's <coughs> observation. Uh, and maybe we're both with you, but so in other words, the way this is written, uh, a pickup truck, a motor truck having all of the following attributes, etc. And then it says, okay, equipped with an open. This is an example of something you're not supposed to have. <coughs> And it says not exceeding nine feet. And the way this is written, it is exceeding nine feet. And it's okay, right? And that doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. And ditto the next one. It says an overall vehicle length not exceeding 22 feet. So if it's 25 feet, it's okay. And I don't think it would be a thinking on that. That's what it says. Thank you. That's all I got. All right. All right. Um, <coughs> Maggie? I will vote against this in the hopes that it will go back to the committee and a clarification of this will be written so that one can see what is prohibited and what is allowed. Okay. <coughs> I would appreciate if the directors would push their speaker button. <clears throat> but I will call on Man <coughs> Director Armandaris. <coughs> yes. Um, I understand what everybody's been suggesting, and I'll come back to that. But uh, one thing that surprised me in this whole section was the allowable exceptions for stopping in red curved areas. And one of them that bothered me was, of course, uh, an attendant vehicle may stop to uh, make passenger transfers. Another one is they could stop for the use of a mailbox. So my recommendation, I, I move that we send this whole subject back to committee and then reconsider it again with the clarifications that everybody's asking for and rewritten. All right. Uh I think, how do we do this? <laughs> we have a, a motion on the floor. We need to vote it down and then have another motion to send it back to committee. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. Elsie? Uh, I, I hear you, and I, I, but is there some way we can... Microphone. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm new at this. Is there a way we can send it is there a way we can pass it, but still send it back to committee for no, no, changes? No, 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 no way. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. We need to vote down the motion about the that's on days. the floor. Okay. Cash. Uh, I will agree with uh, Ms. Blackwell uh, to send this back because there are so many loopholes that need to be corrected. So I will vote against this mm -hmm. motion. Okay. All right. <coughs> Let's, let's take a vote on the motion that's on the floor, I, and then we can go from there. I we have a motion right now. They're both the same. No, they're not. Yeah. Vote. 
Okay, uh, which motion are we voting on? We're one voting. One <coughs> I, I second Manuel's motion if, if you think that is a motion on the floor. We I have to get rid of the motion on the floor, no. which is to... Um, uh, okay. No, that comes. We have to so vote down the motion on the floor to approve uh, <coughs> the okay. resolution. Okay, just if be we clear which one we're voting for. Think it needs to be changed. For. Then, when that resolution fails, then we have a second motion to send it back to. Okay. Committee. All right. Would you vote, please? <coughs> That, that makes 12, and we don't have 12. No, that makes 11. It says 10. It's a little hard to read. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It looks like 11 on no. But anyway, <coughs> it does not pass. So now we'll go back to Director Armenteris for a new motion. Okay. I move that we send this back to committee and consider all the input that we've given and rewrite it and then submit it. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. Yes, <clears throat> Andre. Uh, on page three or five, uh, resident vehicle decal limits uh, under the bullet, bullet points: one bedroom manor up to two decals, two bedroom manor up to three decals. I would add it that an original footprint, bad, one bedroom in original footprint, because there's a different interpretations on that. Okay. All right. Well, let, if we send it back to committee. Oh, it says. <coughs> yes, Maggie. It says it, original construction. It does say that. Yeah. All right. So <coughs> uh, the motion is <coughs> moved and seconded that uh, we send this back. It would be to the document review committee to uh, hash this out and come up with a new resolution. All those in favor, please vote. Yes. Yes. All right, it's unanimous. Back to you, Maggie. All right, H is to entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for revisions to the land use alteration policy. Um, would you read that, please? Yes. The Board of Directors established policies and procedures for the construction of alterations, additions, and expansions. The Board, through resolution 0. A U0246, U02155, 010454, 010 and 01 collectively referred to as the land use policy, adopted and implemented the land use alteration policy, some of which allowed members in limited circumstances to make exclusive use of certain portions of the common area to expand the footprint of their unit, except the one in June 2017-0117 does not allow that. Let's see. That's the next to the final one listed, does not allow that. Uh, members have expressed concern over the land use policy and in general the board's policy to allow members to use common area for their exclusive use by making alterations to units that expand the structure beyond the original footprint. The original footprint shall be defined as the unit original patios, courtyards, and atriums shown on the original floor plans. 
Members have been permitted to construct alterations on previously approved or grandfathered extensions of the original footprint. Whereas the board has consulted staff legal counsel and having previously terminated the land use policy that allowed members to make exclusive use of common area through such alterations. Now therefore be it resolved November 13, 2018 that the board hereby introduces the revised land use policy. The Board of Directors shall not approve any alterations expanding the original footprint of units, but that all such alterations currently in place, which have already been approved under the land use policy, are grandfathered and resolved that no further alteration may be approved or constructed on any previously approved or grandfathered alteration that encour encroaches on common area other than like for like, <coughs> that augments, enlarges, or changes the construction purpose or use of the previously approved or grandfathered alteration. Resolve further that no new improvement room extension or room addition may be constructed on any previously approved or grandfathered expanded footprint area. Resolve further that the determination of whether a proposed alteration is a like for like shall be made by staff in consultation with the committee and subject to appeal to the board whose decision shall be final and made in the board's sole and absolute discretion. Resolve further the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. Do you move? No. I need a motion. I move. Okay. Moving. I second. And Carl. <clears throat> All right. Uh, now we'll have discussion. Yes, Maggie. Um, I take issue with the grandfathered. Grandfathered, as far as I can tell, is impossible to monitor. Do we have a list or photos of those already in place that we can compare it to? As far as I know, we do not. Anything that then comes up in the next year or so, someone expands their patio by putting out pavers, just little cement block pavers. And they don't say a word to anybody. They do it next month, they do it next year. I do it tomorrow. I extend it. I don't tell anyone who is to say when I go in two years and say I want to expand this or make it permanent, just pave it over because it's grandfathered it's not in. It's grandfathered if you didn't get a, a variance permission for it. But it says approved or grandfathered. If it just said previously approved, I would go for it but it continually says, or grandfathered. Who is to say this is grandfathered or not? And I don't believe we have, we could get drone footage of all the exterior paddles and so on, or we could just erase or grandfathered all, just out of there, because if it's been previously approved that encroaches, if. Otherwise, it's been, it was never approved. It will be unapproved when it gets into escrow. They will have to change it back. And I believe we do not want to open that door to anyone who might be listening here today. So erase your TV set. I never said that right out loud. So don't go out and do that. Uh, because I, I see we have no way of monitoring that because we don't know what reality is right now. <coughs> Carl. The, uh, the issue of grandfathering, to me, is the fact that it was previously approved by some means and it's grandfathered in because it was previously approved. The issue of whether or not you can monitor that, that came up in committee, in our architectural committee, because we had a email from you, Maggie, that we read and uh, Mr. Kurt had indicated that 
he felt there was methods of doing that. And I'm wondering if you could comment on that at this particular point in time. Just to clarify, Maggie, the um, third to last resolve further on the first page defines grandfathering. Does all such alterations currently in place, which have already been approved under the land use policy, are grandfathered? The key words there are already approved. Correct. And right. then they can be grandfathered. But if they put them in themselves and did not. But then the, the, all the, the following or grandfathered can be crossed off. They can be stricken because this defines what is grandfathered. All such alterations currently placed which have already been approved. So previously approved, previously approved, previously approved would be fine, eliminating the grandfathered words there. Okay, so all you're suggesting is that we take out the word the grandfathered. 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 Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, Cash, you're next. This, this whole thing uh, is really for purpose of revising policy to clarify that grandfather clause or whatever is already done and say there's a patio cover, the person wants to change it into a room. Uh, but here we are just complicating the issue by eliminating the June 17 resolution that we made that there will be no more grandfather. We included no more uh, modification, or use of common land. And now you're opening up a can of worms by adding all these. All we need to do is revise that one sentence, that one thing that says, what is grandfathered cannot be changed other than like for like, that's right. it. And, the, and there are <coughs> permits when previously issued grandfather property exists. Well, so there's one no cannot problem. come in and put. We know what has been approved. Exactly. If they put them in even 20, 10 years ago yeah. and it was not approved, yeah. then they can't do anything with it. We have exactly. to have it approved and we have records that show us what alterations so, were approved. So here we are literally complicating the issue and wasting time talking about okay. it. Reza? Other than for grandfathered properties, that okay. is all this was for. Raisa. <clears throat> I need further uh, clarification on this like to like. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me uh, what we're talking about here. Okay. I'll ask Kurt because this did come up. This is what prompted this uh, resolution. The intent, the intent of this resolution is to if somebody in the past under previous land use policies expanded their patio footprints, for an example, mm -hmm. whatever they have on their patio footprints when they expanded it or what they have at this point is all it's going to remain. If it is just a patio at this point, that's all it can be. It can't be made into a room extension. They can do a room extension on their original footprint, but if the footprint was enlarged, what it is now is what it stays. If it has a patio cover on it, they can replace the patio cover with a patio cover. They can't replace the patio cover with a room enclosure. It's just what you had approved when it was approved is what it stays. Okay. <coughs> Jeff. Jeff. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'd like to uh, just Is expand on Kurt's. Um, and let me let Razor go real quick, but just want to clarify that the use of the term grandfather what Maggie is suggesting is correct, what Cash is suggesting is correct, as well as Kurt, but grandfathering just clarifies that if, if you're going to propose a change and be confronted with a member looking back and saying, well, you approved their change, but you're not approving mine, the use of terminology of grandfathering expresses the intent that, yes, we approved that back then based on a policy that's different than today. And the word grandfathering just clarifies that change in policy. That's all. Okay. Uh, Elsie? Uh, council made my point. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Raisa? <coughs> this is an important resolution. I think we should send it back to committee to make uh, uh, the writing very clear, because to me it's not clear. All right, uh, Manuel. Okay, if we look at page five of eight on this item, uh, and you read the third paragraph up from the bottom, it says, resolve further that the Board of the Directors shall not approve any alterations expanding the original footprint of units, but all such alterations currently in place which have already been approved in the land use policy are grandfathered and resolve further that no further alteration may be approved or constructed on any previously approved and then change that word or to and. Any previously approved and grandfathered alteration that encroaches upon common area other than so on, that should solve the whole problem and concerns that we have. It says and. It says or. Change that or to and. So then it is in uh, agreement with the previous paragraph. That should eliminate the whole concern. It has to be approved in order to be grandfathered. No. Oh. It would say that in both places. Yeah. That's my suggestion for getting through this thing right here. We're wasting a lot of time. All right, next is um, Andre. Yes, uh, I, was, I was going to propose uh, similar to uh, 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 Amadea's uh, uh, proposal. What I'm seeing is, uh, let me bring up the, the or means either or. You don't have to have both. Or means either or. So is, is it possible that you have a grandfather but not a previously approved? No. No. So if that's the case, then there's no need to mention grandfather because everything is previously approved. So if it's previously approved, yes, we will allow you to, uh, uh, to ex uh, exist. But if you are not approved, we don't care whether you're grandfather or not. Something happened, you don't have a permit and we should, you should remove that. So let's remove that or grandfather. The second thing about the, is the last paragraph resolved further, that new, no new improvement. Uh, are you talking about outdoor improvement or inside in, indoor improvement? If they have a, a house, if they already had a cover, they made a kitchen, but now they removed the kitchen, made a living room out of it or something like that. Do you consider that as a new improvement? So we need to clarify what a new improvement is. No, we don't because it's only on land use. Coos of common land. It has nothing to do with the interior of your unit. If it's already approved and uh, uh, land covered. Use. Land use. This is land use. Common area. Common area use. Okay. Okay, I, I just, I just, then I just would, uh, withdraw that statement, but it, I think we just removed the all grandfathered because all we talk about is previously approved. That's it. Well, I think that's what we were talking about, and Jeff gave an opinion on what grandfathered is and why it should be previously pleased, acute, uh, approved, which are the ones that are grandchild, grandfathered, grandchildren, whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Yes, Raisa. <coughs> I repeat again, as there are so many comments on this, I think we should send it back to the committee to clarify and rewrite it so that there is no confusion by anybody what it means. Well, obviously the confusion is by you. As you can look and see on the <coughs> attached policy, uh, this has been going on since 2002. We have had many, many, many meetings. We've had many resolutions. We've had a town hall meeting. It's been brought to the members, all of that. Uh, and uh, it was last revised in June of 2017. So <clears throat> I, I can't see sending it back to myself, sending I it back to the committee on again. I oppose June 17th as well on this policy. I oppose on this because the wording even there was not clear. And okay. they didn't allow for utilities, which after my... We had a separate resolution that did yeah, on the utilities. Af after that. 
after that, uh, uh, Laurie Moss <laughs> came up and said, okay, we allow 30 square foot. Then uh, the board came up and said, we'll take 30 square foot out and <clears throat> we will uh, just put utility. But even that is not sufficient. I think we should uh, deliberate on this in committee again. All right, if you don't agree with it, you can vote against it. I can only say we have had so many votes on this and approved it as this, and then the separate resolution, which was just the utilities. And that's the way it stands now. So, uh, Director Armendariz. Thank you, Juanita. I'd like to make a motion to amend this resolution to change that one word on page five of eight that's in the second to last paragraph, and, and change that any previously approved or to change, change it to any previously approved and grandfathered alteration. That's my motion. All right. Uh, you don't make amendments. It's amendment, an amendment. Yeah, amendment right. to the motion. It's an amendment to amendment the motion. To the motion. All right, is there a second to it? His second. motion? Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we remove the word or and put in and. In those three spots? Right. Yeah, that's my question. It doesn't matter. Second last. Right here, second right. last. Well, it's, it's, on in, page. it's in a it's, couple spots. It's in, in those three eight. spots. In those three it's spots. Two, three spots? Okay. Yeah. Change it whatever it needs to be. Or you got the word? I second. I second. All right. Yes. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded that we. Uh, amend this resolution to take out the word or and put and in between uh, previously approved and grandfathered. Make it and instead of or. Question. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see on my little chart here. Um, cash is first. I just want clarification that uh, we are not eliminate since we are eliminating the June 17 resolution that we are not, no, 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 we're not taking some of those parts back in or allowing part of those I just want to make sure of that mm -mm. yeah we didn't rescind because we'll be eliminating mm -mm. No, we don't have anything in this resolution uh, to eliminate the previous resolution right we're just so clarifying okay. okay thank you okay Andre Okay, first, uh, I only see two places I would need to uh, modify, so I would cl ask to clarify where are the third one, or maybe just repeat it. Second one, if we are just making clarifications, then we are making amendment. We are not making new resolution. So right. I'm not sure this resolution is going to replace the original one. That's no. what re uh, resolution is. This is not amendment of the original resolution. So if we... If we keep this, if we vote for this one, then we're saying the old resolutions are all obsolete. Okay, so there are two issues here, just a clarification of uh, where are the changes and also the definition of a resolution. It's an amendment. It's an amendment. It's an amendment to this. We vote on that and then we'll vote on the amended if it passes. The whole thing here is Okay. That well, can we first get the clarification of the, the three, or mm -hmm. and and the bottom line? Oh, the first one is in the first uh, second one, two, three, four, five. Whereas on previously approved or grandfathered Got expansions, it. we're making that previously approved and grandfathered. Where are you? Thank you. One, two, oh, yeah. three, four, so five. Two? Whereas it's where's the third one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, wherever wherever yeah, it is, three. or place an and. Right. I agree with Carl. It's three. Three. Yeah. All right. Okay, so my second question is, and this should be an amendment. Is this an amendment to the original one, or is this uh, the whole thing? Original. We first, this amendment to the, um, is this amendment to the amendment, or the amendment to the resolution? Amendment to the resolution. Uh, but if we are, resolution will replace the original resolution. So if we just no. clarification, we then it's amendment. You amend the resolution. It's, Let's go. 
We amend the existing. We're not rescinding the original because the original had a lot more in it than right. this does. Okay. Any other speakers? Nope. All right. Let's vote on the amendment to this resolution. Taking out the ors and putting in the ands. Yes. Yes. I'm a yes, too. Do we have streaming? No. Do we have to vote again? All right, so what's the final vote, please? <clears throat> Madam Secretary, 10 to 1. Okay. Madam okay. President. Yes. I'd like to make a comment to the, uh, to <laughs> Kurt and his staff for all the work that they have done on revising and standardizing our resolutions. It's been a hard job. We've all appreciated it for all your effort and please relay that back to all of the staff. Thank you. All right, we have one more. Uh, what we did was amend right. this to it, but we did not vote the resolution. Uh, the resolution itself. So all those in favor of the resolution, the original resolution. Please vote. Amended resolution. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or really, yes. it's the amendment to the existing resolution. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Already approved the amendment. We're voting on the resolution. Yeah, but the, the whole thing. Yeah. The piss. Voting on the amended this. resolution. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. I'm, I'm a yes. Nine. Carl. Carl. Oh, yes. Well, we got enough anyway. That's all right. Yeah, okay. It's his committee. <laughs> <coughs> all right. <clears throat> Eleven, all right. All right, seven, two, one, because he's not here. All right, that takes care of our new business, and we are on to committee reports. And let's <clears throat> see if we can get through these quickly. <laughs> uh, Gary, 14A, the report from the Finance Committee. We always like to know where we're doing financially. I have a question. Yes. Uh, did we go through the committee assignment? No. We moved that issue to the closed meeting this afternoon for discussion. Oh, so we have and some And then it will be brought back to an open session. Okay. Okay. I didn't hear that. Sorry. Okay. Slide one, please. Total revenue for United. Oh. Total revenue for United through September the 30th, 2018, was 30 million 599 thousand, compared to expenses of 31 million 76 thousand, resulting in net expense of 477 thousand. Slide two, please. United Mutual was better than budget by 441 thousand, primarily due to employee compensation and re re related due to the progress of certain reserve programs, such as tree maintenance, dry rot, building structures um, that are delayed and work will increase in, in quarter four. Manor water heaters are being installed by an outside vendor, which leads to a favorable variance in compensation. Paint program also has a favorable variance due to smaller, mostly single-story building uh, being painted, which require less materials and hours. Building structure replacement to date 
is only minimum has had only minimal work been required. Landscape revitalization work will begin in November. Water lines remediation work on, uh, on qualified buildings uh, which are in progress. Materials and supplies, a favorable variance due to a different manufacturer of water heaters being used in the community for the first part of the year. However, the board decided to go back to using a 10-year warranty water heater. Slide three, please. This pie chart shows non-assessment revenues received a date of 1,244,000 by category, starting with the largest revenue generating category of interest income, followed by fees and charges to residents, laundry revenue, and so forth. Slide four, please. On this pie chart, we see expenditures to date of 31,078,76,000, showing that our largest categories of expense are for employee compensation <coughs> and property taxes, followed by outside services, utilities, and so forth. Slide five, please. The reserve balances on September 30th, 2018, were 22,473,000. dollars Year-to-date contributions and interest to reserves were 9,224,000, and year-to-date expenditures were 9,184,000. Okay, our monthly resales. Um, United, the number of resales were down by 88 as compared to a year ago. Dollar-wise, they were down $14,603,636. Our average resale price was up $25,523. Um, our monthly leasing report shows us that 8% of our units are leased at this time, which has been steady. Okay, our delinquencies are uh, down 4,000 um, from the previous month, uh, and, but they're up two units. Um, we have seven accounts that are in legal jeopardy. And... Our, um, delinquency report for chargeable services is up $27,667, um, and the count is down eight. So, um, there's some work to be done there. And that's all I have. Our next meeting is scheduled for November 27th at 2 o'clock in the Sycamore Room. Thank you. Uh, next report is from the Architectural Control and Standards Committee. Director Grizel Durrell, do you want to give your final report here? Actually, we did not hold a meeting. Uh, so but you can see the work that we've all done, and I want to thank the committee, the board members on the committee, and also our advisors who are more than incredible. We've been very fortunate to have such professional advisors. And there again, I can't say enough for staff. Uh, if we didn't have the staff that we have, we wouldn't have accomplished what we've accomplished since we started, I believe, July of last year. So I've been really excited, and I can't say enough for being the chair. Uh, I brought a lot of knowledge, and they helped us all along, and it's been a fantastic time. I'm going to miss them. I'm going to miss all of you, the committee members and all, but um, we all have a future to us, and I'm excited about going to Arizona. I do have, and I took my glasses off. <laughs> The, ne the next meeting is going to be December, 20th. December the 20th 
And uh, there is talk that if we don't have a, uh, any type of business to con conduct as far as variances, we may hold our meetings uh, in the future, maybe every other month or whatever. But if there, we will schedule a meeting. If there is variances to be taken care of, the committee will meet on a monthly basis. If there's no variances, as we had last this last meeting, then we will just postpone to the following. I thank all of you. I, I'm going to miss all of you too, and the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Our next report is from the Communications Committee, Director Blackwell. Okay, we had a meeting on Friday. Uh, we went over our mission statement, our deadline schedule for the breeze, our construction of a reminders list, the structure of articles and the responses we give to the globe and email communications. Uh, we don't anticipate having any regular meetings at all, as we never had them before when <laughs> there were only two of us on the committee. So there are three on the committee, two of us were there. We're moving ahead just fine. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome Elsie to that committee. And Reza well, well, who was not there. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the next report will be the uh, <clears throat> member hearings committee, which was held on November 20th. Uh, as usual, we had a fairly full agenda of damage restoration, uh, non-payment of uh, uh, assessments and fees and fines, and then the actual disciplinary uh, items that were on there. And uh, of course, we can't talk about those in detail because it's all confidential. I would like to, um, again, thank the compliance department because they have done a superior job in improving the reports that we get from them, which have made it much easier for the uh, member hearings committee. And uh, they brought us just about up to date. We were three or four years behind and uh, we're up to date as of the first of this year. And I think maybe it might even be March now from what I've seen. All right, the next report is governing docs and that's me also. There we go. Okay, the Governing Docs Committee met on uh, Monday, October 22nd, and we <clears throat> looked at uh, primarily um, the, the possible changes to the caregiver policy. Uh, this is discussion all over the community uh, as to if we have to ha need any changes to the caregiver policy, what they should be. And it's uh, something that we will also be discussing in our next governing docs. Uh, <clears throat> we discussed the traffic rules that we looked at today and we sent back to them again. And that was it. So. <clears throat> the next report is from, oh, our next meeting will be November 26th at 1.30 in the Sycamore Room. Now we have the Landscape Committee, Director Blackwell. Yes, thank you. Um, I will talk a little bit about the specific tree trimming program, which was mentioned in, in this week's breeze. Uh, we have 318 different species of trees mixed throughout the village. We have 1,541 Canary Island pines, 945 southern magnolias, 1,114 carrot woods, which have messy fruits. We have 2,714 crepe myrtles, which are very easy care. And we have 70 one-of-a-kind trees. We have 369 camphors. So the plan is that we take the Canary Island pines, which are needle droppers and pollen producers, and we put them on an annual cycle. And we put the carrot wood trees on an annual cycle for a, a minor trim to eliminate the fruits and to, for the Canary Islands to pick up the litter. We put those on a quick trim yearly. They stay on the 34 month schedule for regular branch and shape trims, but we give, give those two quick prune trims 
And to balance out the work levels, then we delay the trimming of the southern magnolias, the camphors, and the Australian willows, which can go for four years instead of just 34 months. So with the yearly trimming extra of the others and the extension of these trees, it all comes out to a nice <laughs> workable package. Uh, we're also considering removing uh, trees where there are groves of trees and the growth is so dense that we can't really treat them well and they're not, not needed to have so many trees, then we will remove a, a fir tree like a canary island pine or something else because sometimes they're planted very closely to the building and we have five, five trees surrounding a building and really two could be removed and the aesthetic would be improved, but the upkeep would be lessened. So, so we're looking at spots to do that, but that's tree removal, not tree trimming. Thank you. Oh, oh, next meeting? Next meeting is the 13th <clears throat> of December. All right. And, then. oh, yes, and of course, our, uh, our trial period for the organic organic pesticides will be up then, and we will have a full report on that. That will be a very big landscape meeting. That's December 13th. And it is here in the boardroom, so it probably will be uh, on the air. Right. Or at least take to put on the air later. All right. <clears throat> the next one is the... December 13th. December 13th. 9 o'clock. Here in the boardroom. Okay. Uh, maintenance and Construction Committee. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, <clears throat> since this is the first uh, meeting that I chaired as an MNC chairman, uh, certain things went on during that meeting, and I'd also like to bring up some of the items that were in the project log to sort of get a recap on some of the items. Uh, waistline remediations, 120 buildings are estimated to be completed during the year, and 110 buildings have been completed in 2018. <laughs> And on September 11th, the board approved the request for early release of 2019 funding to continue work on this program until the middle of November, which, should, which is obviously coming up. Uh, exterior paint program, uh, we went from an eight-year cycle to a 10-year cycle as of January 1st. <clears throat> the other thing that was discussed uh, was the uh, paint palette, which everybody knows mm -hmm. today. It's now, we have now our quote-unquote red AKA uh, Spice Berry. <clears throat> the uh, other thing that was discussed uh, was the Shepherd's Crooks, and we started that installation along the areas with the interior roads, which abut against El Toro and Moulton, and that corner is ours right now, and that's where they're gonna be starting. I put a map on Channel 6 uh, a number of weeks ago. Uh, I still have that map to provide that level of detail. The, uh, the other thing we discussed was the fire avert devices. These fire avert devices are being considered to be used, notice being considered to be used and united for possible sale and installation. This is being reviewed to be used in a pilot program that would investigate the use of either type of device. There's two dis different types. Both types turn off the stove in the event of a fire. In one case, the noise from an alarming smoke detector will be heard by the device, and this will trigger the device to turn off power to the stove. And the other type will also be used with the smoke detector. However, in that case, a relay device in the smoke detector will cause the power to the stove to be turned off. And those two items are currently being checked out and a possible pilot program is being uh, started. And the next meeting is scheduled for December 14th. However, uh, there's been some discussion about the fact there may not be enough items to discuss at the December 14th meeting, so that meeting get, may get canceled. I'm discussing some of those items with uh, Ernesto and some of the people on the board. Uh, we may need to get some additional information before we decide to uh, cancel that meeting. Uh, and now next in the report is from the uh, Energy Task Force, and that's you again. Yep. Energy Task Force. I have to admit, the Energy Task Force is really turning into a really 
good group of people. I mean, we had a three-hour meeting this week, and uh, I thought it went very well, actually. Uh, <clears throat> the Energy Task Force is made up of directors from United, just to get a recap, directors from United and Third Mutual boards and GRF boards. So there's two each plus a number of advisors. As I said, we met this past Wednesday and discussed a number of issues. We also elected a chairman and vice chairman. Our new chairman is uh, Bert Maldow, and I was elected as the new vice chair. The meeting was long. We knew it would be long because of the various different things we were going to be doing. Specifically, we were going to be uh, getting a, a briefing from two companies that are going to be doing business with us shortly, and these are Ice Energy and Energy Coalition. Ice Energy made a presentation regarding their Ice Bear unit. This technology is used in tandem with our air conditioning units so that the air conditioning compressor can be shut down during the peak hours when we are paying the highest rates of electricity. These Ice Energy people are currently working with the VMS staff to determine if we could use this technology in various large buildings and clubhouses and possibly the community center not the residential building. Currently, if we can use this technology, we will not only save on electrical usage, but <clears throat> there are also monetary incentives being <coughs> provided by Southern California Edison that could make this installation be accomplished at a low or no cost. However, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We are still in the preliminary stages of this particular issue. And then we had a second presentation that was made by the Energy Coalition, a company that has been hired as our electrical consultant from United Third and GRF. Energy We've consultant. Well, energy consultant. We do more than electrical. We do more, but these people were looking at electrical energy and the possible use of other types of alternate energy. Anyway, the, uh, and, uh, these people were hired under separate contracts from United, Third, and GRF, but they're working together in tandem so that we can get one uh, uh, report, comprehensive report. Uh, TEC, the Energy Co Coalition, TEC, provided us with these proposals for the work that they anticipate doing, and they made a presentation describing this work. They also looked for feedback and questions from us in order to ensure that they were on the right track regarding what we needed to be accomplished. Since this is going to be a long-term project, it will be done in multiple phases. And I'll just recap on what Third and United are having. They have similar goals. I'll review the current United and Third Mutual's electrical infrastructure with an eye toward our current situation, perform an analysis and report on the findings, and prepare a strategic action plan for what will need to be done to upgrade our infrastructure to address our current and future limitations, including the possible needs of charging stations for electrical vehicles and golf carts, and possible increase in the use of alternative energy, like Juanita had just said. Uh, just need to point out on this issue is the fact, and let me just say, GRF has other issues that they're going to be addressing, but it's part of that same report. Our infrastructure is over 50 years old, and Southern California Edison has notified us that they will only address areas where the infrastructure is no longer working or is on the verge of no longer functioning. They will not upgrade our infrastructure to a higher rating because they feel they only have to replace like for like. However, we feel that in certain areas, we may need to upgrade our infrastructure in order to pass more current through the cables and power up things such as electrical vehicles and other issues. Many of these issues will be reviewed by our electrical consultant, GEC, and they will develop a report of the findings as a part of phase one. And that was our meeting. That's it, and their next meeting? Our next meeting is uh, January 2nd. Okay. All right, last but not least, of our committees, we have the Resident Advisory Committee. Director Akrakar. Uh, thank you, Chair, Madam Chair. Uh, the committee is a place where resident can come in and talk more than three minutes and be one-on-one -on, -one on 
directors as well as staff that will be present to take their complaint and understand it better. Uh, the next meeting is, I'll keep it brief, There's nothing much happened last meeting. So November 15th at 4 p.m. in Sycamore Room. So any resident who has any complaint about whatever concerning United can come there and talk one-on-one -on -one with me because I'm the chair and the staff that will be there. <coughs> Thank you. It doesn't have to be a complaint. If you have a question, question, you're not sure where to go or whatever. Yeah, thank you for correcting me. That's right. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> item 15, I'm going to just ask generally if anybody has a report from their uh, GRF committee. Uh, if they do, let me know. If not, uh, we're almost at 1 o'clock. I'd like to recess the meeting. Do any of you have a report from your GRF committee? I have, I have two seconds. Uh, the GRF Landscape Committee Charter was approved and also the 27 sites and targets for the Landscape Division, those are found at the end of the GRF minutes from last week. Mm -hmm. All of those are in that package. I'd urge anyone that is interested to read, read that. It's very interesting. Okay, and uh, media and communications. Oh, I wanted to say that in the breeze this time, this is, uh, we put together the October and the November submissions for United to get them out. And on the, the story about the Get Your H06 insurance about the leaky toilet on the upper floor that flooded the downstairs unit and wiped it out entirely, uh, the leaky toilet was an alteration toilet put in by an outsider. It was not a United toilet put in by United staff. And that that is why the member up there is responsible for all that happened, which is truly terrible. Thank you. Okay. Yes, <clears throat> Director like Ackerkar. About the disaster committee? Oh, like yeah, I'm sorry. I guess we didn't get that in there. <laughs> well, really, the last <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Right. No, I, I agree. I, usually we have it listed. Yes. You're on the other page. Right. Okay. Uh, the Disaster Committee, Preparedness Committee, is organized by Chief Moy. The device, a device called Fire Avert, was demonstrated by security as a possible precautionary measure for 83% of 58 fires that happened in our community since January 2014. <clears throat> the third mutual has already passed a resolution to recommend a pilot program to test these devices. Although only eight, 19 of these fires were in the United, United has so far not taken a stance, and now I know after what Carl said that they are invest, investigating two uh, units, not the one recommended by Fire Avert. Uh, this Fire Avert device is uh, pretty easy to install and does not need any other changes like the other device they are trying to investigate. Also, I would like to talk about the great California shakeout drill that happened on the 10th of October um, to evaluate our protocols in converting our clubhouses in, into care and reception centers in the event of a large-scale emergency event. As with any first-time drill, we were able to identify multiple areas that we can improve upon to be better prepared for and respond to these types of incidents. We all really appreciate the hard work Tim Moy and his caretaker, his caretaker Debbie Ballesteros and the rest of his staff put in daily to make, our, make sure that our community is safe and prepared for any disaster. As a result of this drill, we will be evaluating our protocols involving volunteer staff, checking in residents, ensure effective radio communications, uh, triagging insured uh, residents, etc. I would also like to say that we need volunteers for our program for uh, volunteers for uh, daily, I mean, Na neighborhood building. Good building. neighbor program. Thank you. The next meeting is on the 27th of this month at 9.30 in Cypress Room, and it's open. Thank you. Thank you. 
<clears throat> uh, on future agenda items, uh, we will be looking at golf cart plug-in fees. We'll go to our uh, finance committee first and then <clears throat> come to us. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to start off uh, director's comments <clears throat> with uh, Director Razor. Raisa, do you have any comments? Director's comments at the end of the meeting. Do you have any comments? Elsie? No. Andre? Yes. Uh, uh, one important responsibility, major uh, obligation of the board members is the due diligence effort, which means you ask questions. You take the money, as uh, all the resident money as your own money, and uh, take care of making sure the monies are well spent. So one uh, major task is to ask questions, making sure uh, all the money are spent uh, uh, correctly. Uh, however, during our board meetings, there are a lot of places we are not allowed to ask questions. I understand uh, there are other places, but uh, uh, just uh, in closed meetings, we can ask questions. But in, uh, in this cases, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, residents, they also were asking questions. So how do we uh, help them understand that we indeed ask questions and indeed we got some kind of answers? So that's the question I have. Uh, so hopefully we'll uh, change the policy and allow people to ask, uh, board members to ask questions in regard to uh, all the reports. Thank you. Cash. I would like to, we had a great presentation by Mr. Rader of the VMS, and maybe we should make that presentation available to the rest of the residents because it's not included in the package. But I hate to waste another tree. It's a decision is yours or the rest of the board. It is but on that the TV. Include, it's on, it's it's on TV, but, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, on it's not in the hard copy. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Director Amandiris. Thank you, Juanita. I think my remarks and comments are going to come as somewhat of a surprise because, as we all know, I've been critical of VMS and some of the work that our committees have done. But during the last month, I think we need to uh, acknowledge the hard work that Siobhan has been doing and all of her staff because we've been without a CEO for a few weeks now, and uh, it's not easy. And I recognize all the hard work you are doing. I will still be critical in the future, but you know, <laughs> that's what we're expected to do. But thank you very much, Siobhan, and thank all your staff for us. Well, thank Please. you very much. Okay. The other comment I wanted to make, this uh, kind of falls into Carl's area and also uh, Siobhan's, and that's that uh, Carl made the comment that one of our highest uses of electricity is air conditioning. And we have two big projects that are coming up. We have air conditioning that's going to be installed here in this building. And we also have it budgeted for the uh, Foreign Arts Center, BAC, Clubhouse 3. And uh, I am hoping that that new installation is using zoning for its air conditioning. Because it that's is. one of the it best is. ways to solve it. Okay? That's what uh, we don't have now. The other uh, <coughs> remark that I have uh, regarding MNC, several months ago we approved the acquisition of the water leak detection devices, you know, those little things like this that you put in your sinks and all that. And uh, I haven't heard anything recently on that. I, I think there was a problem getting them ordered, but uh, I'd like to know what the status of that is, for, you know, and get those out to all the residents as soon as possible. Okay? That's all I have to say. At least I have something positive to say. Thank you. <laughs> Carl? Yeah, I'd like to start off by uh, thanking everybody in the board, because I think this meeting went pretty well, considering the fact we had a long agenda. And there was everybody seemed to be civil and getting things accomplished. So thank you very much for everybody, OK, about that. Uh, I also want to uh, thank Janie and wish her a fond farewell. Uh, we'll miss you, because I don't think you're supposed to be at the next meeting, correct? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and thirdly, I also want to thank Siobhan, because I think it's been a tough job to, for a period of transition. Having been in that position that you're in, okay, when I was working for a living, it's pretty tough. So thank you very much. Maggie? <clears throat> 
Yes, I'd like to say, um, send us your questions. Send us your questions, send us your problems. Uh, we understand that some people are upset and offended when they hear questions, they're, they're frightened. When really questions are just questions, sometimes they're, they're asking for a service, sometimes they're asking because they don't know the answer to something. So keep questioning, keep, keep communicating with us, and please read whatever we put on the website and whatever we send out to you so that all residents are a little better informed. That's what we're aiming for. Thank you. Okay. Gary? Number one, I want to thank Manuel for giving those positive kudos to staff, as I want to second that. I think you all do a great job. Um, secondly, I want to thank Janie for the work you've done. I've enjoyed working with you the last two years, and I'm going to miss you. I know, I can tell you're very happy. And, and that's what we want for you. Thank you. Okay. Jamie. So where do I go after that, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody. It's been a privilege to be on this board. I was appointed, and I can't say enough for all of our new staff, our old staff that we've had, the, the directors that we've had here on United, Previously, when I was appointed and I took Ken Hammer's place, I promised him I would try to do a good job walking in his footsteps, which I felt were pretty large. I feel that I've accomplished a lot with Ken. He'd be really happy, I believe. And I'm going to miss you. And all I can say is big hugs to all you in the community. Sue? <clears throat> all right. Siobhan, anything you wanted to? And just want to congratulate Janie and thank her for time and efforts. Okay. All right. <clears throat> My last comment is I want to uh, remind everybody that we have two positions, one on VMS and one on this board. Uh, nominations for these both can be gotten from Cheryl uh, upstairs on the, the second floor or any A of the... Applications. What did I say? Nominations. Nominations. Well, they call it nominations, but it's applications. But anybody can nominate anybody, but most of the ones that we have are self-nominated. If you're self-nominated, uh, then you just pick up the application. If you are nominating somebody else, you need to get their permission before you nominate them. So the uh, applications are due back on November 28th. And we will have a special meeting of the board on November 30th to fill these two positions. Uh, they are voted on on the board because they are app, uh, appointments, not uh, regular election. And we need to get somebody in place before our December meeting. So uh, those two dates, of <clears throat> November 28th and November 30th for the new applications for board members. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I just can give you a date. We'll send out the stuff, but we need to check room availability and all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. This meeting is recessed. Be sure to leave your stuff.